Oh, it feels so good to be here with you this morning. Welcome, man. Ben and Woods, 97.3 The Fan. A, uh, everyone's feeling so fantastic this morning. Nobody is fussy at all. Padres with a huge, huge dub yesterday, and uh, we are here together. I will say, I mean, we're all a little bit banged up, a little worse for wear, uh, certainly, but great to be here with you guys. Let's get our heads right on a Friday, a Friday, Friday, if you will. I am Woodsy. That is Paul Rindel. He is the executive producer and imaging director. Good morning, Paulie. Good morning. I was uh, at the game yesterday, and it was very back and forth. Great game. And I go, we got to win this one. Got to win this one. I need a happy Friday. I yeah. Need an easy Friday. I need easy. a happy Mike Schill. Yeah. We got to win this one. No, I mean, we're still going to pound Mike Schill oh, today yeah. when we talk All to the, him. Uh, Tough All the questions. Tough questions that need to be answered immediately. Uh, to my left is uh, the working man himself, Benjamin Higgins, your friendly neighborhood sports anchor, who uh, put in a, a very, very long day yesterday. And without the help of, uh, you know, alcohol and things like that, I don't know if it helped me or if it hurt me. I'm, I'm guess. I mean, I feel. I, I had a little alcohol early in the day. Yeah. Then we, then we went sober the rest of the day to get through. Um, Finally got home around 10.30, 10.40 after just a, a constant stream of being downtown and television hits after the radio show. But it was uh, it was a pretty good day, obviously. Uh, Aztecs didn't didn't do as well as we had hoped, but uh, we can't really be too surprised. Day. I thought it was a great day. It was a great day. I mean, that... yeah, the Aztecs winning would have made it a, an elite day, yes. I suppose. Yeah. But I had a fantastic day. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about the Aztecs game. Uh, we watched all of that, too. We're also joined in studio today by a very special guest. Hotel Hannah herself uh, has joined us. She's, well, I mean, she's basically my ride, so she had to be here. Uh, and we'll ask your opinion on a couple things, but good morning to you, my dear. Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you. Thank you. Now, you Thanks passed you out uh, early last night, about 6.30, so Hotel Hannah did not make an appearance last night. No, I was I was done. Hotel Hand Steven made an appearance, but not Hotel Hannah. It domes her out when I tell her that I'll do that when she's next to me in bed. She doesn't believe me. Wait, you, you did that last night? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. As far as you know. Like, whoa. As far as you know. But uh, it's good to see your beautiful face in here this morning. It's good to be seen. You of the uh, the broadcasting lore. She always thinks she can do this job better than I can. I've never said that. She I says it all the time. And and so yeah, we'll we'll probably go to you a couple times today. So uh, just be ready. Be on your toes. I'm always ready. All right, because I know you got a good night's rest last night. <laughs> got to sleep very very early. And I slept in. She slept in and was just she just conked out mm -hmm. uh, last night, but. Well, what were some of the highlights uh, for you guys yesterday, well, I, I Benny? I think for me, I want to say thank you to the uh, the one or two tier ones who stopped me to say hello downtown San Diego yesterday. <laughs> that was amazing. And by one or two, I mean several hundred <laughs> of you. It was amazing. Long, long, yeah. and that was awesome. That was really, really cool. Uh, it, was, um, it was a good party. It was, everyone was, I think, cautiously optimistic. It wasn't like last year, like everyone's going in and we're going to, roll the Rockies, we're going to stomp them, and then the stunning kind of loss at the end of the day that, like, what what happened there? Well, that, that was an aberration. I think this year everyone went in going hopeful, like, okay, you know, let's see what happens. And then after the game, everyone was just in a phenomenal mood, uh, having seen a win and, uh, you know, a, a good game and a come-from-behind <laughs> effort a couple times where they came yeah. from behind to take the lead, rallying, just what we never seemed to see last season. I must have heard it. Like 70 times, I'm like, that's the kind of game they don't win last year. That's oh, yeah. the kind of game they don't win last year. So it seemed like everyone was in a really good mood as they walked out, and that just that made me happy. I had a smile on my face uh, all afternoon long. Now, we, uh, yeah, so we went to the game, and, and I, I was pretty cash by like the fifth. And I wasn't, I didn't have seats, so I couldn't sit anywhere. So we went out to Gallagher. By the way, credit where credit is due. The new, the new Gallagher Square is incredible. Incredible. We loved it. We, Went on the hunt for our brick. And after a while, everyone was doing the same thing. It was right around the Tony statue. And we're looking, and we're looking, and we're looking, running into some tier ones. Hey, if you see mine, yell at me. And if I see yours, I'll you know, let you know. So we, it is fully, you feel like I'm, I'm honestly searching for a lost earring. You know what I mean? You're looking. There's no way you can find it. Finally, somebody uh, spots it for us. Go over and see it. And it was really cool to see. Uh, and fine. So now we know where it is. Our kids are going to love it um, to see their names on the brick there. I loved seeing my name on there, and uh, it was it was awesome. So 
milled around down there a little bit, walked up to see Sammy in the uh, that Budweiser lounge and, and talked to him for a minute. He was busy, so we just took a picture with him and then just started to meander uh, a little bit around the ballpark, got some delicious food. We went to the uh, Picotti and Gelati, oh, had you some did. pizza there. It was outstanding. Um, it was really, really good. Walked back down to Gallagher Square. And I was done. I, I wanted to watch the game. And I could hear things. And, and I was watching on the big screen. But I just, I I wanted to see, like, sit down and watch it. And so we were staying close by. So I said, let's go. Let's go. We'll watch it on our, our iPad or whatever. And uh, so we left. Somebody's going to rank me out for it. I, I've never stayed for a full game. And I never will. So if that makes, in your mind, I'm not a true fan, I can live with that. Because I just wanted to get home and consume Mud and Don and and take some notes on the game and you know pay attention to it. When I'm out there in Gallagher Square, I I'm I lose focus a little bit. So that's what we did. She was very mad at me for dragging her out of there. <laughs> but I had also had the two shots at breakfast. No, and then one shot at uh, Corey's tailgate, and then two giant cups of sangria at Corey's tailgate. I was done. I was like, if I don't, if I keep going, it's going to be bad. Now, did you walk back to your hotel, or did you uh, use one of our pedicabs in downtown San Diego? Oh, my gosh. oh, well, we walked, but it wasn't for a lack of trying from the pedicab drivers. They, those things, I'm not going to rank out how anyone wants to make a living. That being said, those things are menaces. They so they've you're telling me they've outlawed bird scooters downtown. Yeah, I, I told you about my experience with the. Big speaker LED pedicab, light yeah. pedicabs, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. We you're, were there. We stayed like downtown for my birthday. Tr- drive. I wish for, it was eighty dollars. What was it? <laughs> it was like one hundred and fifteen bucks to go. <laughs> I don't know. Joy ride or three somewhere. blocks? No, to our hotel. To Back, your hotel. We went from dinner to our hotel. It was maybe three blocks. It was cold and windy and late. We we're like, let's just get this. It'll be yeah. fun. Let's do it. Dude, we got off. I was like assaulted afterwards. I or I felt violated because yeah. they. I'm like, how much was this? I have no idea. There's no they prices listed. There's no price. No. And he just was like, uh, he's like holding an iPad to swipe my card. I'm like, how much is it? And he goes, uh, let me. The, you know, how much is it? And then he just swipes <laughs> my card for me, and it was 115 bucks. I'm like, okay, uh, for three blocks. Yeah, that's criminal. That's criminal. It was yeah. so is the music Ridiculous. that they play. Yeah. I mean, it was so the, my favorite part of the night. This was incredible. So we it's the game's over. So we go downstairs from our hotel room. We watch the rest of the Padres game. Now we wanted to go find some food and watch the Aztecs play. That was the next goal. So we found what's it called? Uh, water grill. The water grill. The water yeah. grill. We've got a uh, we've got our name on the list to wait to get in. <laughs> this dude walks up. God bless you, sir. You know who you are. He was Schnocked, and he gets in the back of the pedicab. He's fumbling with the long uh, seatbelt, and he's like, Brrr. and then he goes to the guy. He's right in front of us. He goes, "You play some Metallica," <laughs> and the guy's like, "Yeah, yeah, sure." <laughs> and he puts the seatbelt on, and as they speed off, we see him doing the drums <laughs> in the back of the pedicab, like getting after it, like Lars he Ulrich. Awesome. It was incredible. Those things were weaving in and out of traffic, and you know, all you hear is like, "What is love?" Big, <laughs> just hauling ass around downtown, so, and I'm like, "So I can't ride a bird scooter, mm-hmm. but these guys can drive these chariots through downtown <laughs> at 40 miles an hour." Okay, now Megan sense. was telling me, I guess there's either something has been recently passed or is about to get passed. The pedicab guys are all pissed off at the city because. There's like ordinances going on where they can no longer drive right up to the hotels, like through the valet loops, Good. because they're like, it's too loud. You're annoying everybody. <laughs> it's so loud. So like they're, they're Sweet home, Alabama. <laughs> their like, access is the getting world? a little bit limited and they're not happy about it. But <laughs> I'm like, see. fine by me. They're retaliating. It was it was nor- and weaving. And I mean weaving in and out of traffic on two wheels. One guy flew across the thing, Hannah and I were like, and everyone down there was <laughs> Everyone down oh there was gosh. loaded. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Welcome <laughs> to the jungle. <laughs> the one that we saw. <laughs> With the neon light. <laughs> it was so good. It was so good. But uh, yeah, so we we had a nice meal. Now, I don't, I'm not expecting downtown to be some peaceful oasis like spa day when you're walking through the streets right. of downtown. You it's going to be a little raucous. Activity and liveliness. I just think maybe the pedicabs take it a little bit too far when it comes to 
the noise pollution and uh, the danger to pedestrians in downtown San Diego. Cole wants to know what what's worse, the pedicabs or the e-biker gangs? Now, we live in Encinitas, oh. where the little gangs of e-bikers, they don't bug me very much because I, I didn't have an e-bike when I was a kid, but, but I had a bike. And there would be 40 of us riding as a little gang on our bikes, too. Bro, so I, Every I get time it. I drive through Encinitas and I see, like, this gang of teenagers gang. on these e-bikes, I go, it makes me happy, honestly. I know everybody hates it. Because they're I go, together. Bro, I would be doing the exact there's, same thing. There's no question. If I grew up in this time and I was 15 years old, I would have one of those e-bikes and I'd be like, guys, let's roll. We've already told uh, both of our kids. Like sons of anarchy. Sons of Encinitas. That's not going to happen. <laughs> like... <laughs> You're gonna be on a you're gonna be on a ten speed whether you like it or not until you can drive like it's not going to happen because well they go about sixty miles an hour and we see them around the neighborhood all the time and I just don't want my kids getting hurt you know that's the thing but um, no it doesn't bother me too much because we were in a little bike gang when we were kids but we were not in a pedicab gang we definitely were not driving pedicabs around at forty miles an hour downtown but I'll tell you what man San Diego uh, certainly showed up yesterday for the Padres and. Uh, certainly showed up for Ben and Woods. I I remain blown away every time I run into Tier 1s and people just, we have really made a cool connection with them and I'm very, very grateful for that. In fact, one of our, our favorite Tier 1s, Anthony, An, uh, uh, Anthony the Butcher. It's his birthday today, so happy today. birthday, Aww. Anthony. Happy Bro, birthday, he wrote Anthony. me a, a DM last night that basically said, I started listening to the show, I made a ton of friends from this show, and now I've got people flying in, Tier 1s, and I met through your show for my birthday. People are driving up to Murrieta tonight for the Tier 1 barbecue that they've put on. And I just said, he goes, I, I owe it all to you guys. And I just went, man, that is incredible. So happy birthday, AB. Oh, it's next week. Sorry, next week, buddy. Um, but he is just, he and that whole group and, and all of you guys out there that make it a priority to listen, come to our events. We just thank you so much. Dude, it was so cool at our broadcast yesterday, just being able to put more names and faces together. Yeah, always. And especially now, like, this YouTube community that we've gotten yeah. to chat over the last year has been incredible. And you guys are crazy you're in here for four hours every single morning Nuts. talking with us throughout our shows and it just feels like we're all a bunch of friends now just kind of getting through each morning well you and make like us meeting rafa for example he goes oh this is little rafa and get to meet his son i'm like yes I you know make he was us there. you make us look good man because baja rick himself was standing there at the back dude with his hands on his hips master like master of his domain looking over his restaurant <laughs> nodding his head yeah. and he's like Son of a bitch. You guys made us look really <laughs> good. Money well spent. Yes, just sweet. looking and he's just kind of nodding his head. I'm like, man, this is awesome. So thank you. You're going to, you know, the fact that you guys come to those means we can do more things. So uh, thanks for being there. So let's get into some baseball and some basketball and uh, all of the, the fun things ahead. Uh, for Ben and Woods today on a Friday. Great. We will set the menu. Uh, we've got some uh, killer guests on a Friday today getting into really the regular nice. season, including the uh, the skipper of the Padres, who will join us today for the first of his regular appearances of the year. We'll tell you all about it when we come back, talk about the game and more. It's Ben and Woods. Let's get our first check of traffic. Kelly Danick standing by on a Friday. Good Friday. Easter weekend coming up here on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fam.
Now, full confession, because I was working yesterday and we were live uh, all evening from the uh, the Marriott downtown on Channel 10, I only sort of half got to pay attention to the Aztec team. You probably watched it a little more closely than I did. I did. Uh, you know, obviously the final score was ugly, 82-52. UConn is a juggernaut, and at this point, I'd be very surprised if they don't go on and win the national title, but there's still some good teams remaining. You know, we talked about it earlier in the week, I think. It's not like like BYU. I hate losing to BYU. Sure. New Mexico, UNLV, it bothers me. UConn has beat our butts, like, a couple of really big games yeah. now over the last 10, 12 years. Which sucks, but... And it sucks, but there's just some part of me, I'm like, I don't hate UConn. It's respect. It's a tip of the cap. <laughs> yeah. Watching last night, I mean, it ended up being a 30-point blowout. Well, you just didn't, like, man, they're just really good. You didn't play well and lost by 30. Had you played extremely well, you, you would have lost 15. by 10. <laughs> I mean, it was... They're unbelievable, man. The, their, their vision. And even Dan oh. Hurley, their coach, admitted we played a really good game today, even Bro, for us, for it, a really good team. And I know the Aztecs didn't have their best game. I've got his comments. We'll get to him a little bit later. But I, I was just going to say, I don't think I... It wasn't the worst time to not be able to yeah. watch the entire game. I thought what I saw in the first half, I go, looks like they're hanging they with were. them okay. They were. But they're just so relentless. Yeah. It's like, all right, it looks like the Aztecs are playing well, and they're within three, and now they're playing well, and they're within six, and now they're playing well, and they're within 13. nine. And it's like, yeah. how, how do you keep playing okay? And yet the lead continues to grow for UConn. They were just that kind of team, relentless. They never... They, they never quit. seemed to have them a little lull in the first half where they didn't score for like three minutes. That was about it, though. You never felt like you had a great opportunity to come back in that game. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. But obviously, early in the show, we will be devoted to the San Diego Padres coming up here at the bottom of the hour, a Padres wrap-up. Yeah. And you'll hear Jesse and Tony's calls. If you didn't get it yesterday, you'll hear all of it of the Padres. Six to four win over the San Francisco Giants on opening day contributions from just about everyone. Yep. I mean, no one was the huge star, but everyone seemed to do something in that game yesterday, which is uh, something I really like to see from the Padres. So we'll uh, we'll give you our spin on it as well coming up. In the 7 o'clock hour, uh, we got Take on Woods and Don't Do This. Uh, I'm looking forward to the second half of our show today. Though. Very much. Uh, we will have Eno Saris joining us. Now, Eno's going to be a Thursday regular again this season, but he... Uh, he agreed to join us here on a Friday to give us some of his thoughts on opening day around Major League Baseball. He made some of his bold predictions in The Athletic this week, a couple of surprises out there. I'm going to ask him to make a bold San Diego Padres prediction based on his wisdom and uh, knowledge and information at some point. I'm hoping it's a good one. I'm not going to limit him. Maybe he'll make a bad, bold San Diego Padres prediction, but I think the numbers are fairly kind to the Padres. We'll talk to Eno at the top of our 8 o'clock hour. We've got one more pair of uh, Tom Segura tickets to give away. It's been a very popular giveaway this week. Comedian coming to Pachanga Arena later this year. The tickets go on sale today, so you can be the last to win them before they become available to the public later today. We'll give those away. Uh, we're going to do an early Rindle report at 8.30 because... The manager's report debuts today, 9 a.m. <laughs> and you can uh, you can plan it. Set your set your clocks to it on Fridays when Mike Schilt uh, joins us on a weekly basis here on 97.3 The Fan to talk with Ben and Woods. We'll break down the game yesterday. His just opening day experiences. I want to know. I want to know everything from Mike Schilt today, from shaking hands with Bob Melvin during lineup introductions. Yeah, I want to hear it all. Does he have like an hour? Can he do I, last I hour love, with us? I would love to just kind of hear everything. Of course, he's got another game to get ready well, for it's like, today. We were talking about it, I think, off the air yesterday morning, the three of us. Like, it wasn't tech. We didn't know what to call officially yesterday because it wasn't the home opener because, well, they've had a home game. It wasn't the season opener because, well, they've played two games. But yesterday really did feel like opening day, did no, it not? No question. No question about it. And and it had the all the, the pomp and circumstance. And I'll tell you this right now. We were in line to get pizza, and I was I was doing the thing where I'm, I'm panicking because I'm afraid I'm going to miss the first pitch from Shield. And I'm like, and Anna's like, just go, just go. And I, we finally checked out just in time. We ran up behind home plate <clears> so we could peer down. And I, I expected to be emotional because I'm an emotional dude. And when she walked out and she pointed to the PS, well, my eyes welled up with tears. 
And then when I saw Manny come out to catch it, I was done. We were standing. <laughs> I, was, I, I was done for. I smacked my wife. Look who's catching it. Because you know Manny doesn't catch a ton of those first pitch balls. No! He's not ever. catching, like, VP of San Diego uh, Credit <laughs> Union. Here's Manny. He, he doesn't do that. No, but to see him walk out there, I go, oh, God. I had to quick. I was surrounded. There were tier ones to my right, tier ones to my left. When, when he walked out, I had to put my glasses on. Because at that point, tears were streaming down my face. And I... I lost it. I lost it when she threw it. I, I mean, just lost it. We have a lifetime best friend contract with Manny, and I do not expect him to be out there catching our first pitch next week. I don't week. expect to that. see him even <laughs> in the dugout. You know, it's, it's they're getting ready for the game. Let, let's start, though, just quickly, because you, you bring up Sheil and the first pitch. I thought the tributes to Peter Seidler yesterday. I don't know that I've ever seen a gathering of that many people, 45,000 have more respect and honor for a person collectively. A moment of silence that was truly like almost completely silent with with 45,000 people and the and the screen going black. The PS carved into the grass which was amazing. Uh just seeing it the players and you know how how respectful it all was and how well done it was yesterday. I thought even if even if the game didn't go well, that would have been a special day just because of that. I think he made it a little more special, and I'm sure Peter enjoyed it, uh, where he was watching uh, that the Padres did get that win and felt like maybe he had a, he had a little bit of something to do with that game yesterday as well. So I was like at the two-hour celebration of life on Saturday. I-, I wasn't super emotional at all. It was sad. It was moving and powerful, but like, it didn't really get me in the feels. The second they put his photo up on the board for the moment of silence, I started to tear up yeah and then yeah seeing manny walk out there onto the field got me started to tear up and right before all of that happened um they were getting ready to do god uh national anthem i think and i looked down we had pretty pretty good seats yesterday so i was able to look right down there on the field Mm, can't relate i got a picture of i'm gonna put it up on the youtube chat of (laughs) shiel and alicia gwynn and they both had gwynn and ps on their backs of their jackets and i just I was like man look she goes oh get a picture of that she goes that it is was, so good it was like heartbreaking and beautiful all at the same time i'm like they're just those are the like legends in padres history yeah. now that are no longer with us but to see them two together right there on the field is like god that's emotional it's amazing yeah it was um you know opening day kicks ass all the time like it's for every team it's like yes all right here we go the uh the the new season is upon us and the possibilities are endless and it's great but uh it was obviously really really special yesterday fun to be a part of when we found our brick we found peter and shields brick uh too and then the 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 one next to Hmm. theirs is their kids and i I was a wreck out there too i'm like oh my god man man. but um yeah you know listen you you don't want to get too corny but you do you do feel uh, there's a presence there, certainly. I know my wife talks about it all the time uh, with her dad uh, that passed away. There's a presence, always. And in weird times in our life, she is convinced that her dad is a hawk. Oh. And he's always around. And, yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> it's we'll be somewhere with our kids, and we'll have, like, that weird family moment where everything kind of hits you, and you're like, ah, this is what life is supposed to be. And you'll look up, and there's a hawk soaring above you it's weird it happens to us all the time and our kids now notice it's it's really cool so (laughs) without getting too you know spiritual and whatnot uh we are definitely you don't have to sell us on the whole thing (laughs) like we're all the way in making all the time all the time we'll be like dad i need a sign yeah give me something and like within a day Whatever it was, that Adam she was calls you for. and goes, "Hey, yeah. right, that's yeah, your Patrick sign." That's the sign. <laughs> hey, hey, right, if you're open, hey, I just signs, got the sign yeah. from Adam. He's here. Your dad is <laughs> here. <Dad's> here. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he's sleeping in today. He's not in the chat. Not very active. That's nice. That's nice for him. <laughs> Our big boss is in uh, Mammoth. He's kicking Mr. it up Hawk there. Sn- snow, uh, <laughs> snowboarding. So cool. It's cool, guys. Well, Don't worry about us. We'll be here on Good Friday. Well, hey. Holding down the fort. The if office you, closes early. It's Good Friday. If you're asleep, you're going to miss the Padres wrap-up yeah. coming up next. And uh, right. sucks to be you. Yeah, but sucks to suck, we'll, everybody. Uh, we'll get to Tony and Jesse's call of the game yesterday <laughs> and uh, give you our thoughts on the 6-4 win over the San Francisco Giants when we come back with Ben and on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
This hour, 97.3 The Fan is brought to you by your local San Diego County, the UPS Store. Your local San Diego County, the UPS Store locations are hosting a shred event. Today and tomorrow, the last two days, 50% off shredding services. Visit the upsstore.com for the location nearest you. See store for details. All right, uh, Padres highlights incoming. Our Padres wrap up with Jesse and Tony, and then we'll break down the game from our perspective right after this check of traffic on 97.3 The Fan. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Danik. One problem we're dealing with right now, it's a car fire on the El Cajon Boulevard on-ramp to northbound 805, so watch out for a little confusion there. I'm Kelly Danik with Ben and Woods, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. I love winning, man. I f- love winning. You hear what I'm saying? It's like better than losing. Oh my God, I'm so stiff. <laughs> <laughs> Miss any of the Padres win yesterday? Ben and Woods didn't. What up, crew? We've got you covered with all of the highlights. I like it when the Padres win. Yeah! 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 It's the Padres wrap up, presented by Hamul Casino. With thrilling slots and tables and all the best rewards, Hamul Casino has all the fun you're looking for. Hamul Casino, fun above all else. Yeah! Give me a do damage. Do damage! Downtown San Diego and opening day, sort of, of the 2024 Major League season. Here this afternoon, the Padres will resume their regular year with a one and one record after splitting a pair of games against the Dodgers back in Korea. And they will take on the San Francisco Giants. Darvish with a little bit of a hesitation. Now he deals in a ground ball slowly to second base. Routine for Xander Bogarts. Down to one knee. The throw to first is in time. And a tidy one, two, three. Top of the first inning for you, Darvish. Conforto at second, one out, no score, third inning. 0-2, here's the pinch, and Ahmed hits it hard on the ground, fair down the third baseline. That's going to roll for a while and get the first run home for the Giants. Conforto to score, Ahmed into second base. Profar sends it into Kim, an RBI double, and a 1-0 Giant lead in the third. Jerkson Profar stands in, batting left-handed. This is a moment for the manager. Mike Schultz got all kinds of levers he can pull, and a bouncing ball up the middle into center field, a base hit, that'll tie the game. Machado checks in, and Jerkson Profar, an RBI single. It's 1-1 here in the fifth. 2-2, little tapper up the first baseline, charged by Wade, only plays to try and tag Wade, and he did it! He missed him! Him comes in to score, which was gonna happen no matter what, and the Padres go ahead 2-1. 3-2 again to Cronenworth, 2-1 Padres. He is running, the pitch is grounded again up the first baseline. This time a fair ball picked up by Webb with the bare hand. Throw to first, Fernando's trying to get to third, the throw over, not in time. Tatis goes first to third on a number up the first baseline. His first Fernando moment of 2024. Here's the one and one. Swings grounded to the left side, past the dive of Kim, into left field and a base hit. Estrada has scored to tight it. Porto will stop at third base. It is a 2-2 game here in the seventh. Matsui again with a very long pause. Now the pitch, and Lee swings, skies it into center field. Merrill's coming on. He's going to make the catch, and Conforto tagging at third on his way. Merrill's throw to the plate is cut by Cronenworth. Now he'll run Ahmed down between second and third. Flips it up to Kim, who tags him out, and a double play to end the inning. But the Giants have taken the lead 3-2. to two. Two and two to Jackson Merrill. Luke Jackson ready. Wade runs. The pitch in the dirt. Bailey throws down to second base. Not in time. It kicks away. Camposano's going to come in to score, and the game is tied. Wade ends up at third base, and the Padres force the action. They force a mistake, and it's 3-3. to Now the 0-1. Line drive, left center field. Conforto and Lee coming on. Going to drop down and a base hit. Wade will score to give the Padres the lead. Third hit of the inning, Xander Bogart, second hit of the day. An RBI single, and it's 4-3. to three. Here's the 3-1. Three and one. Cronenworth swings, lines it into right field, and a base hit. Merrill comes in to score. Bogarts is being waved. He's going to score. Ball ends up at the base of the wall. Cronenworth ends up at second base. A two-run double and a 6-3 lead here in the seventh. Bailey is 0-2 for two at a sack bunt his last time. Here's the 0-1. Grab ball to the right side. That should do it. Xander's got it. Gets up, throws to first in time, and the ball game is over. Padres win the Petco Park opener by a final of 6-4 to four as a four-run seventh-inning rally gets the job done against the Giants.
every situation, we talk about every bats a situation, every time you're on the bases there's a situation and you know, no particular order. I mean Toddy's ball going first to third on the ball crony, top, you know, back to the first base side. That was that was sexy. That was that was that was a fun baseball. I love that. <laughs> that man does love some good <laughs> good heads up baseball that's, that's for sexy. sure <laughs> i mean we got to isolate that clip here every yeah. situation we talk about every bats a situation every time you're on the bases there's a situation and you know no particular order i mean toddy's ball going first to third on the ball crony top you know back to the first base side that was that was sexy that was that was, that was a fun baseball i love that <laughs> He's out of breath there. Yeah. Very, Mike Schilt, very Blaster. excited. That was sexy. Oh, that was sexy. <laughs> I uh, love that. Sexy win yesterday, certainly. There's a lot of credit uh, that needs to be handed out, you know, certainly. The, the bottom of the order. Um, getting a lot done yesterday, putting the ball in play, making things happen. A couple guys I was most impressed with yesterday. And it's not just because he was my pick to click yesterday, Ben, which is a bit that we invented here on Ben and Woods. Pick to click, player that's going to have the best game. Uh, Luis Camposano deserves a lot of credit for his ABs yesterday. Um, it reminds me of when we had Adam Jones on maybe last year, and he told us about his approach in the big leagues. And I've taken it, and I've thought about it, and it's my favorite thing ever. The first two swings are mine. The last one's for the team. I don't know if you could have seen a better exemplification of that than w Luis Camposano's uh, ABs. He's got the big, you know, the big kick. He's trying to do damage with, with those first two swings. He shortens up so much, puts the ball in play, gets two huge, huge knocks with two strikes. That is the right way to play baseball. Right there, it, exemplified by Luis Camposano. He was incredible uh, yesterday in those two huge, huge ABs. The other one, man, how do you not give a shout-out to Jackson Merrill for that massively professional at-bat where he worked a walk uh, late in the game? My pick to click. Your pick to click. And I just – I was really impressed with all of it yesterday – um, the ability to come back a couple of times and win a game, as everybody said, that we almost certainly lose last year. Let me start with you, Darvish, because he had to at least cancel out Logan Webb. Yeah. Who is uh, is one of the best pitchers in baseball. He's the, nasty. The ride he was getting on his sinker cut or whatever it is. Two feet. It's a sinker. It was, uh, yeah, 23 inches. So <laughs> just an inch short of two feet, uh, you could he could throw it at a left-handed batter. Like he did throw it like almost behind a left-handed batter, right at your hip. You're gonna like dive out of the way, and the thing whoop, turns and goes right across the inside corner of the plate. Nasty, it's, dude. How do you stay in and take a swing at a strike when it, for all intents and purposes, comes out of his hand, coming right at you? It's going to hit you, and then it goes just like a Bugs Bunny move to the right as it's approaching home plate. Logan Webb. When combined with Blake Snell, going to give the Giants from both sides of the mound two of the nastiest, you know, and, and it's different. Webb gives up contact, a lot of hard, you know, ground balls, like like heavy ground balls. Heavy ground balls, not um, hard ground balls. Yeah, and he'll get a lot of guys looking. You know, you don't necessarily swing and miss a ton. You'll foul off a bunch. You'll pound a bunch into the dirt in front of home plate. You can't get barrel. But – then Blake is going to get a ton of swing and miss the other side from, I mean, it's, they're going to be a nasty one, two combination for the giants this season. And, and Blake will hump it up to 97. Logan Webb does not. I mean, he, no. he, it's frustrating. And as a fan, you watch and go, we cannot, why aren't we getting barrel this guy? And I tweeted yesterday. It looks like we're hitting those weighted balls. Like you hit them and they don't go anywhere. They just into the ground. I mean, everything we got were bleeders and little nubbers, but this team strikes out on those last year. They strike out looking on those those pitches last year. They swing and miss at those pitches. They they just weren't trying to do too much. I think they went into that game going, we're probably not going to yak a whole bunch of homers off of, of Webb. We need to get on. We need to put the ball in play. And they did that, and they did it really, really well yesterday. They did, and they ended up getting uh, two runs in six innings against Webb. You know you weren't going to probably score you know nine off of it. Sure. So you had to keep the Padres in the game. Started out great, first two innings, gave up the one run, then bounced back. I thought one of the key, absolute key moments of the game 
with two runners on, nobody out. You gets out of the the jam. Strands runners at second and third. Big strikeouts. I got what it was Conforto. Big strikeout there to to get out of the fourth inning. Seven strikeouts, five innings, five hits, one earned run. That's two really good starts to begin the yep. season uh, for you, Darvish. Uh, you know, justifying Mike Schilt's decision to make him the opening day starter twice, essentially this year for the San Diego Padres. So I wanted to start with the starting pitching. Also, have to talk about the bullpen, the good and, and the bad. You know, Johnny Brito. I, and I saw this take a couple of times on social media By as well. a couple of times. Do you mean a couple of hundred times? That I was getting DMs about it yesterday. <laughs> that the usage of Johnny Brito, and we can ask Mike Schultz about this when he joins us, hasn't made a ton of sense so far. No. Based on how they used him in spring training, they were kind of looking at him as a starter, and then all of a sudden they're throwing him in as a one-inning, high-leverage, seventh-inning type guy, and they did it in Korea. They did it again yesterday, and didn't go well. Now, Johnny Brito wasn't... Wasn't as horrible, I think, as some people were tweeting. He gave up kind of medium singles up the middle that got him in trouble early in the inning. But he wasn't wasn't like he was walking everybody and giving up three run blasts. He just, you know, it's a close game and you feel tense. So when a guy gives up a couple of hits, you you tend to just go, ah, it's terrible. Get him out of there. Get him out of there. But I do think there's some questions about how why the best usage of the Padres bullpen. And maybe Mike Schilt still has some questions. It's three games into the season. And they've got a lot of interchangeable type guys that he's trying to figure out, all right, where am I going to use him? Where is the best place to use this guy? And it, it might take a little bit to really dial in the best possible combination of his relief arms. Well, and how about Tom Cosgrove coming in looking absolutely filthy and spinning it up there, uh, struck out two in, in his inning of work. And, of course, Yuki Matsui. That, that to me, that's key. 20 pitches, five outs on 20 pitches, man. He was incredible. He's been the workhorse so far out of the bullpen, Love first him. in Korea, and now an inning in two-thirds yesterday, and he's looked really sharp. And you wonder, will there be an adjustment period coming over from Japan? Look good in spring, but it's spring is different than the regular season. So far, so good uh, for Yuki Matsui, uh, who ended up getting the win, very deservedly so, with yeah. what he did coming into the bullpen. I thought... I thought smart baseball as well when uh, the Giants, the, the inning they actually took the lead, and you had the single to Merrill up the middle, and you had that decision. Do you let the ball go to home plate for what was going to be a close play, but probably unlikely that you were going to get the runner at home? No, you take that out. Or I you thought. take that out yeah. and keep it. Okay, it's a one-run game. Yeah, one-run game. Because I, you don't want to give up a big inning there. And and, I, and, and and that's important because obviously the Padres then rallied back from just down one run. If you try to get the runner at home and all of a sudden – Giants get another hit or two, score another run or two. Now you're down two or three runs. That's a big mountain to climb. But they kept it at a little mountain, little hill. Take that out, man. And they took the out to get out of the inning, and it ended up – it shows it shows some confidence that last year's team didn't have. Last year's team didn't have the confidence to come back from one run down. At all. Like, you, we better not let this run in because we know we're not going to score again, so we have to get this runner at the plate. It was a very calm, very rational, measured baseball decision. Like, let's fight – Let's play to fight another day. We still have three at-bats yeah. to score some runs. Let's get out of this inning. Let them take the lead and see if we can strike back right away. And then they did in the bottom of the seventh inning, which obviously was something we didn't see the Padres do uh, uh, very much of last year. No, I love that. No, yeah, I love it too. Uh, it was sexy. It was sexy. And I'll, I'm going to ask you about all that sec sexiness coming up at uh, 9 o'clock when you join the program. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to talk to him, man. So happy it was after an opening day win. Uh, there was a lot to like yesterday. And listen, we've been talking about, too, we need some things to go our way. You know, the bloop's got to drop, and, and some of the balls got to find some holes, and, and I think they did that yesterday. I actually, they also didn't go into a death spiral after Tyler Wade was incorrectly called out when he was clearly safe. And so I didn't know the rule on the baseline. When you're running down the line, you know, you have to stay in a, in a certain path, but you can deviate. What What's the rule? Three feet. Three feet, okay? Bro, three inches is maybe all he deviated from that. And the, the, the Lamont Wade whiffed on the tag, did not get him, and they called him out, and they called him out of the baseline. Could have been a huge inning. It could have been a huge inning. They took the lead, but inning. it could have been an absolute huge inning. Yeah. And, and, you know, my thought on that, I don't know how Major League Baseball tells the umpires necessarily to rule on those plays. Yeah. And maybe they got it right the way MLB wants them to call it. But it's a tag play. So 
What is what is essentially the essence of tag? It comes from the, the children's game, tag, where you actually have to touch the guy, and they are what? Trying to avoid, to avoid the tag. being touched. That I, To me, that's an integral part of the game. Now, you can't. You can't just let the runner run off in 90-degree directions all over like the place. Like T-ballers that run yeah. into the dugout the, and around? The that rule, would be funny. The that rule would be really is in good. place. You can't just take, you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to run out to right field and come around into the infield. You have to generally go in a somewhat straight line. But don't take the fun part out of the game. It's tag play. You want the runner to try to dodge. If that's how they're going to rule it, you might as well just walk and just except being tagged every time. Do you want them to do that, or do you want them to have a little fun and see if they can get around it? And if they're only going a foot or so around, you know, to, to try to dodge as they're going by, that's a fun part of the game. Don't take that out of baseball. That's tag. That's well, You're playing tag. That's that's fun to see as a fan. And I, I liked, you know, it was nice to see the skipper come out, show a little fire yesterday, um, and, and argue in defense of his player. You saw it. You didn't see it on – I was watching it on TV at the time. But – Tyler Wade came down in the dugout, and he was pretty hot. Schilt went over, put his hand on his shoulder, and was like, don't worry about it, man. You know, keep making contact. But, guys, it was, you know, look, if you're going to parse out some of the, the bad things from uh, yesterday, there was still that, that come on, guys, l- sacrifice fly, get this ball in the air. Look, it's Logan Webb, man. You cannot lift the ball. Bogart, somebody made a point in the chat. Bogart's thought he barreled one and almost started to pimp it, and it was like a little flare into left field, drove in a run. But, um, I mean, all in all, man, to be able to come back twice, it's just not something we're used to seeing at all from this team in the last year. And look, the the turd losses are coming. Oh, like, 100%. They're, they're going to be there be at there. some point. But so far, through three games, I've seen a lot of fight out of the Padres. No question. And I love to see it early in the season. I love. I want it to continue all season long. Whether it was the two games in Korea against the Dodgers or yesterday, chippy game against the Giants, back and forth, and to see them never quit and keep fighting and keep scoring runs and scratching across well, runs, and, I loved it. And the base running too. I thought Fernando Tatis Jr. Got to give some credit to him. He wore stallion. He wore Matt Chapman's knee right to the face, oh, taking God. that extra base. It's st- th- those. Those are the things that we're maybe we just aren't used to seeing Get anymore. Pin drop in the stadium from this please team. Yeah, please get up. Please get up. It was uh, it was a great great win, and and it wasn't the prettiest, and they weren't hitting. You know, I, I if you conversely flipped over to the Dodgers game and saw how they were winning their game, yeah, it's a Mookie Betts home run. I mean, we weren't getting that. This was a little bit more scrappy. Um, well, it was a lot more scrappy. It was a lot more heady. Uh, like you said, the cutoff play, Ben, I thought was really really smart to keep from getting a big inning going. So I, I really liked what I saw yesterday. Would love to see some more of it tonight. There was one criticism of Mike Schilt that I kind of disagreed with. I saw some people thinking he uh, he went to his defensive replacement, Jose Azokar, too early. So I thought then, maybe the same thing. And then Azokar came up you know, later in a situation where he could have driven him some runs. He didn't. He struck out. Three three pitches. And I'm probably going to get blocked here by, by Jerickson. But what, what are we doing here? I mean, it's not... It's not like they took out Fernando Tatis Jr. for Jose Azokar. Jose Azokar had a good spring. Jurickson had a decent one. I know he drove in the run in the you know the first run of the game for the Padres, but doesn't mean that he's going to come through every single time. Well, I get to, it, but to you, me, you, okay, so you pinch ran him, yeah, and you had him at you third. You get some speed, and out he gets there. thrown out on the contact play at home. So like, it feels a little bit kind of like he didn't like, do anything wrong. No, he was supposed to go. No, so far he made it close. That same thing would have happened to him. Exactly, he made him a, made a really had to make him make him a really good play to get him out, Look, which they did. Here's the deal, we sat in here and and lamented some of Bob Melvin's moves because we always kind of felt like and he he earned the nickname here Sleepy Bob. I never called him Sleepy Bob. Mike Schilt is the opposite of that. He's aggressive Schilt. He's going to make strong moves. We've been praying for a guy that's going to make pulling a lot of strings. strong he's, yeah, he's, decisions, he's right? He's playing the harp. He's he, pulling so many strings. He's making what he's making do with what he has right now. So look, it all worked out. I'm not going to complain about it, but it's an interesting question. Two hours away from Mike Schilt joining us for the first manager's report here in the season. Looking forward to that. We'll come back, play a little take on Woods. Hour number two of Ben, on, ben and Woods next on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
One other Padres note saw in Dennis Lynn's recap in the Athletic that, uh, and take this for what it's what it's worth, but it's been discussed by the Padres front office, which means you know AJ Preller and his his scouts, uh, the idea of a reunion with Taylor Trammell, which we uh, we discussed yesterday that he had been designated for assignment by the Seattle Mariners, former one of the top prospects of the Padres system, was used to acquire. Austin Nolan and others in a very ill-fated trade. Never was able to uh, hit on the big league level, though. Was Trammell to Seattle, or did he go to Cleveland? No, first? he went to Seattle. Seattle. Yeah, okay. he went. He was part of did the. He, uh, he was part of the Munez. Yeah, he Maybe. was. Maybe. Yeah, we caught, we got him. I think from I'm look. Uh, from Cleveland, and then we flipped him to Seattle after a, a no. season. The no. Reds traded Trammell to the Padres in Reds. a three-team trade. Ohio, somewhere in Ohio. <laughs> Doesn't really matter. And then he went with France, Munoz, Torrens to yep. Seattle for Nola, Altavilla. Yeah, it Austin doesn't. Uh, doesn't I, I don't know. I mean, what? what's the what's you already have Jose Ozokar as as a light hitting outfielder. Like, what do you need another light hitting? It, it's funny for? because guess, eight, who's the next one up if somebody got hurt? It, you, Who's in AAA? Who's the next outfielder? Marcy. Marcy. Mm-hmm. So maybe you bring him in on a minor league deal. Yeah, he's not coming up right away. You, you cannot just count on depth. Taylor Trammell on the big league roster right now. He's, he just hasn't hit on the big league level. But my point here is that as as clinical as A.J. Preller seems, and he's, all, he's as unafraid to trade his own best prospects, and you think, God, how does this guy – put so much time and effort into scouting, signing, developing guys, and then just heartlessly sends them off, you know, to help his bullpen right before the start of a season. But he truly does fall in love with these guys because who has he brought back already? Daniel De Los Santos was a Padres prospect. They tried Luis Patino during spring training. If there's a chance to get these guys back at some point, He'll do it. now Taylor Trammell, he will do it because he does love his guys. Yeah. He does love them, but he realizes – at some point, I gotta let him go because I can't. I can't develop them all. I can't bring them all to the big leagues. So he ends up trading them. But you feel like he never stops loving them and kind of has his eye on them even after they go off to other organizations and wonders. Well, someday, maybe we'll get that guy back at some. Could point. Could he possibly fall back in love with Andres Munoz and uh, bring him back into the fold? I that would be one. Available. That would be one that I would be very interested. Doubt, in, doubt he's available. In, in bringing back, I'm sure he's still madly in love with him. Got another AJ story for you. First, though, I would like to solicit a call for a take on Woods contestant. If you want to try to qualify, we're getting near the uh, end of the month. I don't know if this is uh, the last day that you can qualify for the trip to the Fontainebleau, Las Vegas, but. Uh, if it is, you want to get in today, 833-288-0973. Our musical trivia challenge is just ahead in a couple of minutes. Uh, the lines are open right now, though, so if you want to get in, haven't played before, haven't gotten in this month, 833-288-0973. The last one for March. So it was, I think, around the, the fourth or fifth inning of the game, and uh, I had had the coffee and some water, and I had to go use the press box restroom yesterday. Yeah. And I walk, it's in between innings, and as I'm walking toward the press box restroom, I have to walk past the general manager's booth. And as I'm walking past, A.J. Preller walks out. Good morning, guys. And where is A.J. headed? He follows right, I say, hey, A.J., how are you? Follows right behind me and follows me into the restroom. (laughs) Whoa. And then we end up right next to each other um, at the at the <laughs> urinals, urinals in the restroom. All right, I, who took I, the tall one and who took the small? Uh, one? We actually took the two tall ones, and the small one was already occupied to our side left. By side. So it Joe was Davis side, was using the small side one. by side, uh, and I'm not one for conversation in the bathroom, but I I just wanted to say to him, oh, no. I said. <laughs> I said, don't you have a private restroom in there? They don't give the GM his own bathroom? Nice uh, penis, I thought is what <laughs> you said you were going to say. Man, this water's cold. And deep. <laughs> and he said, no, I do, but we got a lot of people in there, and there's like a line. So I, he just came out and with the, with the mingling with the commoners in the media to use the restroom. And now I've already said something, so I said, and I, I did want to. Oh, you kept it going. I did want to let <laughs> you know. All while you're, uh, and you're, you're literally. <laughs> 
I did want to let you know that you did a phenomenal job at the Peter Seidler Celebration of Life on Saturday. It was a fantastic story. He's just, like, yeah, I got your text, dummy. You, you knocked it out of the park. Your junk. Yeah, you're holding yeah. your wiener. Hey, really, really nice job there talking about Peter. But, that was really good. Of course, I am... I'm kind of nervous because he's right there. So I'm sitting. I can't really get going. <laughs> so, oh, my so, God. So then he wraps up and he's gone. And I'm just kind of still standing there and going, now I feel now I feel really oh. weird because I still haven't even really started yet. And he's already done. So that was kind of an awkward moment. And as well. not only that, <laughs> yes, he's already done. He's yeah. finished. And you're still standing there like a weirdo. Yeah, exactly. And you've also had a full conversation yeah, with I him. Know. Yeah. Did he? Did he? Res- th- thanks. Did yeah, he just yeah, give yeah, you like yeah. a? No, no, he said thank you. Give me a thank you. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> he doesn't. Chills. He doesn't mean to be <laughs> awkward and uncomfortable. It's just in his nature. It's just who he is as I a know. person. Yeah. Oh. So. <laughs> You do like an empty bathroom. I, lo- I do. So well, it's he's... just more for my own safety and security for the most part. He hates when I come into the bathroom with him because I'll talk to him the whole time. Yeah, because I know it makes unsafe. You'll yeah. specifically wait until he, he goes, goes. and you're like, oh, Polly, watch this. I actually time. So I look at our rundown that Polly gives us and I try to find when does Woods have to do like a QC, QT, QC, Q, kinetics. QC kinetic spot? And yep. I know, okay, I can run to the bathroom because he's occupied for a minute when I don't have to be here. So I can go when I know he can't wow. join me in there. I love You're to follow like him in. He's very aggressive. Trader. Yeah, I love to follow him in there. <laughs> yeah, Johnny says, Ben, you're an all-timer. That's exactly right. Like, he's just an all, it's just an all-timer. This is what we get to work with every day. Hey, how you doing? Uh. I'm going to make a weird comment about your private bathroom, which is weird in and of itself. Hey, you're out here peeing with the regular folk. I'm not proud of myself. I'm really not. Uh, anyway. Little, it's not even the regular folk. It's the it, press box bathroom. Yes. Ben wouldn't be caught dead in you the main You wouldn't be caught in the bathroom. main bathroom. I, I, I'm, I'm sure there's, you know, there, I'm sure fa- <laughs> some fans, Padres fans, tier ones, have had encounters with AJ before. Many people have. He, he makes people nervous, doesn't he? he? Does. I, I'm he not the only nervous. one, right? No, he, he makes, makes me, me nervous. nervous. He makes me so uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, I, I, it's not his job to keep us at ease. No, That's it's far not. far from what his job is, but tell you what, he just makes me nervous. So I get kind of stammery around him and like, what do I say? What do I not say? Oh, I mean, I, I can't I, ignore him. Like, that would be rude. I can't just say nothing. But That would be such a power move, though. It is. I, I, I Like, I know he hates me. Like, I know it. I know it in my heart that he loathes me. I don't me. know that he does, He though. does. I think, he does. I, just I know. I feel it. like that's just kind of... Everyone probably feels a little bit that way. About just me, yeah, I know. No, not about you. Probably hates about you. A, that everyone thinks AJ hates them, just because he, make, he just makes you a little bit nervous. Yeah, somebody said, I'd be more intimidated in the bathroom with Scan. Yeah, because he can see over the partition and see what you're working with. I mean, easily. (laughs) Oh, wow. Cold in here, huh? Yeah, Scan Scan is an intimidating fellow as well. Um, But, yeah, well, I'm glad that you had that interaction because I didn't know about that. C20 Moreno says, AJ is chill. It's not him. It's you. Uh, Yes, I know. I understand this is entirely me. AJ is actually has always been quite friendly. Quite polite. He's never said a nasty word about any of us ever. As far as you know. As far as I know. Yeah. And that's all that really is important. It's true. It's the, you know, the as far as you know is always important. It's true. So. That is true. Now we still need a contestant for Take on Woods. Now it's uh, now it's time. So 833-288-0973. <laughs> Call in. We will be playing. Do not go anywhere. We don't have a contestant yet. So was, sit down. I was going to go to the bathroom. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Go into the bathroom. Uh, Hannah, would you like to be our contestant today on Take oh, On Wood? Please let me wax you on the air. Okay. You really? Yeah. Will you do it? Yeah. All right, let's oh, play. Perfect. Let's do it. Hell yeah. Very yeah. nice. I don't know about the legality of, of being eligible for the prize as the uh, spouse of an employee. If, if but Hannah wins, she will you'll donate play for some. Yeah. yeah. So we'll, if if Hannah wins, uh, you'll call in and you'll qualify for our trip to two uh, for two to the Fontainebleau, Las Vegas, hundred and fifty dollar dinner credit. You can book your reservations now at FontainebleauLasVegas.com. Oh, now you're all calling in. Now Hannah's Too our bad. contestant. You Too lost. late. You lost oh, your chance. No. All right. So Hannah, here are your uh, categories today. Okay. We got sunshine through the decades. That's a uh, 
all two second song category. So it's identifying music snippets with sunshine in the title. Okay. Chow time, which is the word eat, is in all of the answers. And we've got a hard category, which is about the word hard appears in all of the song titles Jesus there. Bad. So sunshine through the decades, chow time, or a hard category, what's it going to be? What are you saying? What? What is he saying? I don't know what you're saying. Come on, come back, come back. We haven't started yet. What are you saying? Am I playing against her? Yeah. Yes. She has to close the chat then. Oh. oh. Uh, oh. Yeah. Close the chat. Because right. they will right. help right. you out. All right. Yeah, well, they're not very smart. Let me minimize. All right. Hide, hide, hide. All right. She hasn't even picked her category yet. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, Wait for the door. Let the door close. Soundproofing. Okay, okay here we go. Uh, let's go hard category a hard category okay <laughs> so this is literally a hard category as all five song titles include the word hard 60 seconds answer as many of the five as you can you can say pass we'll come back to it if there's time left on the clock okay. first questions are two second song you need to give me the song title including the word hard and the artist to score that point okay hannah are you ready to play uh, ready as Paul, are you ready i'm ready all right 60 seconds on the clock in a hard category, your time begins when Paul plays the music. Good luck, Hannah. Let's take on Woods. Hard to handle. Mm -hmm. yeah. Black Crush. Yes, correct. Which Beatles song also provides the title? Hard Day's to... Night. Correct. Jay-Z wow. samples from the musical Annie. Hard Knock Life. Correct. An exhausted Hollywood ladies' restroom attendant, and you better treat her right, inspired Donna Summer to write which 1983 hit? Pass. Chicago backs off the horns and ramps up Peter Cetera in which 1983 hit ballad that reached number one on the Billboard charts? Pass. All right, go back to an exhausted Hollywood ladies' restroom attendant, and you better treat her right. Inspired Donna Summer to write which 1983 hit? You can get this one. Uh, Hardworking lady. Mm, good try. Nice. Chicago backs off the horns and ramps up Peter Cetera in which 1983 hit ballad that reached number one on the Billboard charts? That's it. That's the last one. Okay. Chat, chat had them both for you. Uh, Donna Summer, she works hard for the money, and you better treat her right. Chicago, that's a tough one. That's hard to say. I'm sorry. Uh, know it if you hear it. But crush uh, this, those first. Three, yeah, though. you okay. really nailed those first three. So three is the score. I can't Let's bring I back uh, Hubby and see if he can match that or beat it. He does not get the category. Hannah's score is now locked in. Okay. All right. Let's put 60 seconds back on the clock. Winner gets intercourse. <laughs> so does the loser, though, in that case. <laughs> Just not with the winner. Right. <laughs> oh, my God. 60 seconds on the clock. Your time begins when Paul plays the music. Good luck, Woods. Let's take on Hannah. That is uh, Hard to Handle by the Black Crows. Correct. Which Beatles song also provides the title for the group's third album and first feature film? Hard Day's Night. Correct. Jay-Z samples from the musical Annie for the ghetto anthem version of which Hard night? Knock Life. Correct. An exhausted Hollywood ladies' room attendant, and you better treat her right, inspired Donna Summer to write which 1983 hit? She works hard for the money. Correct. Chicago backs off the horns and ramps up Peter Cetera in which 1983 hit ballad that reached number hard one. Hard habit to break. No, it's hard to say I'm sorry, which means Woods still wins 4-3, to three, but yes. it was a good game today of Take on Woods. Hannah, you did a – she nailed learned. the first three, but uh, fell short on the last two. <sighs> I know. I'm disappointed. Sorry about it. That's I don't okay. think we have to pick the kids up for a few hours, so should be a <laughs> lovely little Friday. Uh, Mom after, will be after, home right after the show. Afternoon? Yeah. Yes. All right. Let's, uh, let's, real good. let's take a quick timeout. We'll come back with Don't Do This. And uh, I hate to do it. Because he is our, our best friend forever. But uh, Manny Machado oh, no. is getting to don't do this for yeah. me. He's, me. No. He's getting worn out nationally today. <laughs> Holy cow. For what happened to the game yesterday. That is coming up oh. next after a check of traffic with Ben and Woods here on 97.3 The Fan. Nice job.
Don't forget, you can listen to Sam Levitt's podcast, Inside San Diego Baseball. Sam is covering everything going on with the Padres. You can find it at 97.3thefansd.com, the Odyssey app, or wherever you get your podcast. And we'll start with a Padres-related don't do this from yesterday's game. Yeah, it was uh, the sixth inning yesterday, oh, no. and uh, Fernando Tatis Jr., we talked about that play where he went first to third. And, uh, the sexiest play of the game, according to Mike Schiltz. That's exactly right, and, and ended up wearing a Matt Chapman knee to the head. And That was not sexy. Everyone had to come out and talk to him, and, and he was fine. He stayed in the game. So Manny Machado comes up, runner on third, less than two outs. What do we need from you, our cleanup hitter? We need a lazy fly ball to the outfield. It's going to score Tatis, no problem. Well, Manny gets jammed. But really, even a grounder often yeah, times will score it, it, Tatis as well. 100%. He's the easiest guy to bring in from third in baseball. Something to the right side, on the ground, or, you know. Something. Deep in the outfield. Medium, medium deep depth. in the air. Even fairly shallow can score Tetti. He scored on a pop-up to the infield yeah. before if the infielder's going the wrong way. Manny gets fisted by the pitch, fights it off, and just hits him. Fister? A, yeah, absolutely. And just hits a nice little, just a little duck fart out to the second baseman who catches it. Off the bat, you're like, oh, oh that could yeah. drop. Nope. Yeah, just a little nope. duck, duck fart caught in the uh, infield. And didn't get the job done and was not happy about it. And as he was walking back to the bench, took the bat and attempted to break the bat over I his knee. I think he cracked the bat on the swing. On that, I yeah. think he assumed it was already broken, yeah. so it was going to just snap nice and well, easily. when we were little kids, and we saw Bo Jackson do this for the first time, I don't know of a, a kid on my block that didn't try. At least he's like, hey, just see what it feels like. <laughs> then the one Bo did where he put it on his head and snapped it over his head, you're like, bro, there is just no way. That thing would have to be hanging by a tiny shred for me to be able to do it. But it bounced off. I don't think it, I don't think it broke that bat because it bounced off his quad. And uh, it couldn't have felt good. And he, he looked he looked a little ridiculous You've seen, when he uh, did it. I love the, you so much. The martial so sorry, artists man. who like will take like bricks yeah. or cinder blocks and they'll just chop them in yeah. half with their bare hands. I... I have no idea how that's even and possible. The feet, they kick them and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, board like seven boards yeah. and go right through them. It's it's unbelievable. I hope he doesn't have like a deep bone bruise now yeah. because of that. That, that. Well, that's the don't do this. Yeah. If you don't snap it, you have the potential of yeah. causing yourself some bodily harm. I know. By taking a bat over your knee. Yeah. So, hey, I always hate to do it, but Manny gets a, a DDT. I'm going to throw a don't do this to UConn. Head basketball coach Dan Hurley, who seemingly can do just about nothing wrong. He's won nine straight NCAA tournament games, all by double, double digits. digits. <laughs> this year's three wins are by an average of like 28 points My after God. they took care of the Aztecs by 30 yesterday. And obviously, the team is uh, talented. They work hard. He's a good coach. They've got a great offense. But one of the things that he credits UConn's success to is uh, his superstitions. And he must wear... The same clothes for every single tournament game, which okay. is fine, except for the fact that in the NCAA tournament, of course, you play twice per weekend on the road. So when he wears an outfit on Thursday, he's got to wear it again on Saturday. So he's not putting dirty clothes back on. Here's what he does. His wife travels with him on the road, and she has to bring a... A hand washer, which I'm not even sure what a hand clothes washer is. It's like a washboard the old scrub and a board, yeah. Washboards, yeah. A washboard yeah, and a bucket. Do you do? And you have, wait, what? For the kids. Under oh, washboards. underboard yeah. wash, underwear washboards yeah. for the kids. And she has to, in the hotel room, on the road, wash his clothes, including his oh used God. underwear, because he's got to wear the exact is that the same bell? pair. Yeah. And I'm a... I'm, <laughs> I'm not I, I'm not mad about superstitions. Like most of them are harmless. Don't walk on the lines as sure. you're going onto the baseball field. When Root beer barrels, when right. your superstitions now involve someone else going out of their way, <laughs> bringing extra equipment on the road, and spending time that they could be, I don't know, enjoying the hotel spa or pool or something, but instead you have to hand wash garments on the road. That's a superstition that you can just do without. Yeah. If you want to do it yourself, Fine, it's you, but you're impacting now your your wife, and she apparently she must be a saint because she is happy to do it for him. Says anything that I can do to help the team, she should not have to hand wash his unmentionables on the road. 
just because he's superstitious about it. I can I can hear my wife next to me <laughs> seething. I can hear her seething through it's the. Disgusting. It's he disgusting. to lose for that. <laughs> he does. He's probably not going to. You should go down. Holy cow! All right, this is I I kick this around. I don't know if this is a don't or a do do this. Maybe a little bit of a combo, uh, but we could talk about it certainly. D D Mega Doo Doo. So I uh, saw Patrick Mahomes is now uh, distancing himself from uh, Diddy. P. Diddy, formerly P. Diddy. What's his real name? Sean Puffy Sean Combs. Combs. Then he was Puff Daddy. Puff Daddy. Then P. P. Diddy. Diddy. Now Diddy. just Diddy. Several iterations of his name. Well, he's under a lot of uh, uh, scrutiny, and his home was raided. And uh, again, two ha- homes. I haven't gone into the rabbit hole yet. I'm planning on it this weekend. But I heard there's a report out that is jarring when you read it. So I'm going to read it in its entirety uh, because I like to do things like that. And it has to do with sexual sex trafficking and urination and all kinds of weird not good weird things so patrick mahomes was a, he was a fan it was 2014 so you're talking 10 years ago he's gone back and deleted all his old tweets to diddy that were basically harmless like hell yeah p diddy and happy birthday p diddy hashtag fam so they yeah. were I mean, apparently that's a thing to tweet in general <laughs> The hashtag, oh. hashtag fam. <laughs> so he's gone back and deleted. Even somebody that's not like being arrested or having their home raided, like happy birthday, Jack Harlow. Like that's just a weird <laughs> thing to tweet. Well, so cloud chasing. So <laughs> listen, it's not like Diddy. It's not like Patrick Mahomes did it three days ago. It's like hell yeah, Diddy, keep up the good fight. <laughs> that would, that he just went. He had something. Yeah, and he doesn't run his own Twitter. Somebody went back and like, hey, someone's we, got some awareness here. We probably shouldn't have you. You know, uh, lauding Diddy in in public. I think it's a do do this. It's a do do. I, I think so. It's smart. I Clean up. It's completely now, harmless. In the 10 modern years ago. in sure. the modern day, it's it's smart. I mean, did you go back and scrub all your positive Eric Hosmer tweets or not? When he was well, first, Eric no, Hosmer I never is not a sexual criminal. Well, yeah, he's not also a demon. True. He's just a ground ball merchant. So you can't, this, you can't be arrested for hitting the ball hard on the ground. Hashtag if you could, I condone everything you do. If you could, Eric he would Hosmer's be. Miami home has been raided. He would be in prison. He would be in second base again. He would be in prison for life if you could get arrested for being a ground ball merchant. He would be doing life in in prison. But uh, no, I never uh, have scrubbed my Eric Hosmer tweets. I've scrubbed some tweets before, like, <laughs> certainly. It, it, I mean, look, we all, at one point, most of us listened to an R. Kelly song. Oh, yeah. And now you're like, "Ah, I'm out. I can't do this anymore. Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Uh, We heard Michael Jackson in one of the uh, uh, chariots yesterday, and it felt icky. It feels weird. It feels weird. I think this is a sign of growth for Patrick Mahomes. Going, look, I'm just, I don't want any connection with this guy i'm backing out i'm just gonna Good, delete smart. his tweets so ultimately you know patrick mahomes has already been famous for a long time so people have seen his his entire gamut of tweets that he's ever sent the people who really need to do this who need to go back through their twitter accounts if you're about to be drafted Correct. in the nfl or nba or major oh, league baseball they no already one knows seen who you are yeah well maybe the scouts you know they've done their research but the fans haven't yet oh. you know well, maybe some have, but you should, before you really hit the big time, like junior year of college, just go ahead and go have someone go through your Twitter account before yeah. you really hit the public stage. Yeah, because you no will be will judged on that. No one sure. will ever yeah. know what you tweeted at that yeah. point. I'm going to go see if I have any Diddy tweets. That's, I doubt I do. Can't That's a picture, don't. I can't picture like a really like bad Patrick Mahomes tweet from when he was in high school. I or can't something. either. I just imagine him like... So do y'all like Cheez-Its? Or yeah. I love Mickey D's, man. I love it. I love Mickey D's. I can't get enough. Wheat Thins or Cheez-Its? <laughs> do and don't and sort of do do this for a Friday. That was Don't Do This with Ben and Woods on 97.3 The Fan. All right. We will, uh, you know, I just threw Dan Hurley under the bus. I'm going to say something nice about him when we come back yeah. as well. Uh, talk a little bit about that Aztecs loss, and then we can uh, put a bow on the college basketball season in San Diego for 2024. Coming up next with Ben Woods on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
So you got a uh, a note, Ben, about the portable washers. Yeah, in our chat, um, Stephen said, "Hey, Ben and Woods and Polly, it's 2024, and they have portable small electric washers for clothes. No washboard or bucket needed." Yeah, I think we were doing that part tongue in cheek, um, as far as the washboard goes. But they do make little. They do. I'm looking right now. Little. On yeah, they have. Little, how big are they? At least they look for like, like a little bucket. Oh. And it like swirls around and stuff. Sure. Imagine Mrs. Hurley like. Bucket and bring this. Is it hand? It's, so it's not hand cranked either. It's absolutely <laughs> ele- fully electric. Wait, what are we talking about? The, the washers. The washers. Oh, right. Yeah. The other part of this is if you missed oh, it, God. don't do this. We're talking about Dan Hurley <laughs> making his wife hand wash his underwear yeah, I mean, on the road. He also, I'm assuming, as the head coach at UConn, is making several million dollars a year and staying at a fairly nice hotel well, that all you have to do is call laundry services. So you say that. When my wife, my lovely wife, and I went to Paris on, yeah, uh, ben, if you can see, it's like a little bucket, and you just fill it up with water. It's with got water. a little motor, and it just kind of washes, swirls so it, it around, turns, and nine liters of water. Well, and it's good for underwear. And so, a couple yeah, things. There's a couple, a couple observations. What are you doing to these underwear <laughs> that you can't just run them under the hot water, no. wring them out, yeah. and hang them up? Or a little hand that doesn't so, do anything. That's not Does the it? angle to take. Is he just walking around yeah. just <laughs> like, <laughs> like sweating? I mean, you're it's a, it's a you're game. up and you're it's a, you're a intense. sweaty college basketball okay. coach. You're, uh, Throw it in yeah. the sink, ring yeah. it out, and you know, rinse it. Call it a day. When we went to Paris uh, for our honeymoon, remember this? I yeah. didn't pack enough clothes, so <laughs> I, we we stayed in one of the nicest hotels, maybe in the world, in Paris. And I said, well, it's fine. I'm going to throw some stuff. I'm going to do some laundry. Make Ask them to do some laundry for me. <laughs> I'll get my clothes back. Mm-hmm. Took four days. Four days. <laughs> four the day days. Day the day we're living. <laughs> Sir, we have, we have uh, your, all of your clothes. I'm like, what? <laughs> Where have these been? Where did you, did you send these to Denmark to get them done? <laughs> yeah. Four days later. Yeah. Uh, so... I get it, I guess, of your superstition, but it, uh, it's not as easy as just doing the uh, the old hotel laundry service. This is apparently is much easier. It's our 97.3 The Fan is brought to you by Ashley Furniture. Celebrate and save at Ashley's anniversary sale with Hot Buys, your choice of color, starting at just $399. Ashley Sleep Mattresses, starting at $250, plus receive a free adjustable base with select mattress purchases only at Ashley. Check traffic. We'll come back. We'll talk about the Aztecs uh, getting blown out by UConn. And the Sweet 16 last night, next on 97.3 The Fan. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Davick. Traffic is sponsored by Valvoline Instant Draft the Oil Change, your 15-minute instant draft the Oil Change. That northbound side of the 805 is still trying to recover from that earlier car fire at El Cajon Boulevard, but now there's a crash right at the 15, fortunately not blocking lanes. It's over to the right shoulder. South 5 Coastline, right before Poinsettia, we have reports of a stalled pickup truck now over to the right shoulder. Valvoline Instant Oil Change is your drive through oil change. It only takes 15 minutes, and you don't have to get out of your car with all the rain lately. Valvoline is also offering replacement wiper blades. For directions and discounts, go to SoCalOilChange.com, SoCalOilChange.com. And Kelly Danica, Fenton Woods, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3, the fan. So as I said earlier, I wasn't able to totally lock in on the Aztecs game with my post-game Padres coverage on Channel 10 last night. My plan was... You know, I can always go back and watch it a little bit later in the evening. It's recorded. You're not going to go back and watch a 30-point 30 30 loss. loss. So <laughs> kind of have to rely a little no. bit on Woods for he some t- of the analysis here. This dude texted me last night and put me in the most panic I've ever been. He goes, I go, man, if the if the Aztecs could make a bucket, this is still pretty early in the first. There was one point they had like four putbacks right under the rim, uncontested, and then they just wouldn't fall. And it made me insane. I'm like, oh, my God. It, it almost looked like there was a spring in the basket kicking the ball up, and it just was just didn't feel like it was going to be there. You know, first first ten fifteen minutes or so, solid it man. Was, it was yeah, solid. The Aztecs uh, scored first, which they hadn't done often. Uh, UConn's first deficit of the tournament, and then I think uh, first media timeout or so, they were up ten to nine with UConn going to the free throw line, and then even fifteen minutes in, uh, Micah Parrish hit a three in the corner and yep. had cut the lead back. To five, and you know, okay, you know, down five is critical. And then I did see at the end of the half, pretty critical sequence where the Aztecs were down six, and Darion Trammell had a wide open three, chance to make it a three point game, and he missed it. And at the other end, UConn hit a three. So instead of three point game at the half, it's a nine point game at the half. And that is a, 
I mean, it's not insurmountable, but that's a huge difference knowing not only do you have to beat UConn in the second half, you know, maybe the toughest college basketball team we've seen in, in a few years or many years in college basketball. Now you got to beat them by 10 in the second half. You don't have to beat them by three. You got to beat them by 10. That's a huge mountain to climb. And then when things in the second half just kind of started getting off to a bad start, at that point, they started chucking up threes, which is your, the only way you can yeah. get back into a game like that. I don't, I, I'm, I'm not going like, oh, that was a bad game plan that they started just throwing up wild three pointers. Nick, it made the game ugly to be sure, but it's your only hope that your miracles start falling. And wow, we just made seven off balance threes in a row, and now we're within two points again. It's an unlikely strategy, but it's your only chance once you get down that big to UConn. So I wasn't mad about really any of it. The, the better team won. They're the better team against just about everybody, against everybody in college basketball. I can't promise you they'll win the tournament, but I certainly think they're going to. And it's it's no shame to lose by 10, 20, or even 30 to this UConn team this year. Yeah, I mean, look, it, 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 and so when I texted Ben, I said, man, if they could make a layup, they'd be right back in this thing. And Ben goes, hey, I, I actually can't watch much of the game. I need you to be the Aztecs analyst tomorrow. I go, What? Me? Are you crazy? I just I like watching and enjoying the game. And I, I will say this. Uh, I meant to tweet this last night, and I totally forgot. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed watching this basketball team. And we've, as a family, I think, watched more Aztecs basketball uh, throughout the – we watched, all, obviously, all the tournament last year. That was incredible. But regular season, we've watched a ton. Bo is way into it now. <laughs> like, we are – we were really, really into it. My wife's Aztec for life, so uh, I thoroughly enjoyed watching these guys play. I really did. I love Brian Dutcher. I love everything about that program. Um, and I don't think you can take away one single thing. Another Sweet 16. Let's not be the, the city that you know gets mad when we, when we don't go to the championship every year. Making the Sweet Sixteen is <laughs> making the Sweet Sixteen is yeah, a, I got you, I got you, Benny. it's a very big deal. Um, and so, you got out, and really though, I, Benny, the the rebounding is what murdered. Oh, they got out rebounded, um, fifty to twenty nine. Yeah, twenty one offensive boards, and you know that's a big team. It was something that plagued the Aztecs most of the season, though. Was rebounding was an issue once they lost Nathan Mensa and Agueca Rope last year. Ladie is a great player. He's not defensively what some of those guys are. He had eight rebounds, but only two of them were defensive rebounds. He had yeah. six offensive rebounds, but two defensive rebounds, not enough to keep UConn off the glass on their offensive end. I Dude. think four of them came on the missed putbacks. Yeah, that's true, too. <laughs> like, I really think yeah, so. Some like... of them were racked up with no <laughs> missed purpose it, whatsoever. Missed it, missed it, missed it. There's at, four. At least, though, uh, offensively at least, Jaden Ledee will, should go down, I think, as he's an all-first-team San Diego State player ever like he was so much fun to watch he was Incredible. a beast he was the heart and soul of this team this year and it was so fun to watch I, i'm excited to see what he does on the next level me too because Very much so. well he, he certainly has more of his game to develop he does have the ability to play inside mid-range and he shot like 40 percent from three-point range and we saw Kawhi go to the nba with, I don't think with anywhere near the offensive game that Jaden Ledee had. Now, Kawhi was a much better defender, and that made him a, a regular right away and gave him the opportunity to play in the NBA, whereas Jaden's going to maybe have to step up on that end if he wants regular playing time because I can see an NBA coach going, I can dream on this guy, but he's got to be able to stand on his own against yeah. NBA-type offensive players. But uh, you certainly, with that body, that build – and that nice touch and skill, see him succeeding <laughs> on the down. next level. <laughs> uh, when you look at, and I saw, like, our, our buddy Ryan Phillips, that dude is a college basketball <laughs> junkie. And I mean a junkie. Yes. He tweeted something last night, and, you know, I, I wouldn't tweet it because I don't want to sound ignorant, but he said, look, you know, I love Coach Dutcher. I love the defensive mindset that this team has. It, it suffocates teams. But when you run up against the UConn, they're a perfect example of a team that you can do both. They're just excellent defensively, and they're excellent offensively. Do, in your opinion, but do you think Dutch needs to find somebody that is more of an offensive mind and, and maybe try to recruit more offensive players? Because that was really the, the, the bugaboo for this team all year. They just couldn't score. They didn't shoot it all that I mean, well. honestly, it sounds good. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change a thing really? about what I'm doing if I'm, if I'm Brian yeah. Dutcher. The reason he gets, I think, such good players at San Diego State, especially good, the best defensive players, 
is they know they have the freedom to fail on offense, and some of them do, but they're not going to get pulled out of the game for a bad shot sure. like some coaches do. And it's always going to limit San Diego State a little bit offensively, but you will consistently be good when you are good defensively like San Diego State is. They won't be the flash in the pan that Loyola or Butler or some of those other teams are because defense never slumps, really, like like in baseball. He never goes into a slump defensively. So I wouldn't – I don't think he should really make a lot of changes. Uh, honestly, who wouldn't want to send their kid to play for Brian Dutcher? When you hear what he told his team after the game, and, and there weren't a, a huge amount of tears. I think they were proud of what they accomplished this year. But listen to this just perspective from Brian Dutcher upon the exit from the NCAA tournament. Hang on. That is good. Sorry, one That's sec. deep. Just working on something. Here we go. I like that. <laughs> Thank you. I like Brian Dutcher. I like First this comment. Congratulations to uh, UConn and Coach Hurley. Uh, we wish them the best of luck moving forward. Uh, they're an outstanding team and uh, will be very dangerous down the road. With that being said, I want to say it's not the ending we're going to remember. It's the journey because the journey's everything, and we've been on an incredible journey together. I take great joy here tonight uh, with these three guys sitting next to me. Uh, the fact that uh, they're seven and two on college basketball's biggest stage over the last two years is something to take great pride in. And so uh, I said, if losing a basketball game is the worst thing that's going to happen in your life, you're going to have a fantastic life. And so we're just enjoying each other's company, the brotherhood that they're always going to be a part of, uh, the family that Aztec basketball is. And we rejoice in that, even though uh, we're disappointed in the outcome of the game. The game is not the journey, and we embrace and love the journey we were on together. It's fantastic, man. Yeah, I mean, again, yeah. you know, he's he's the, he's one of those coaches. You say, "Here you go, coach. Here's my son. Um, you know, I trust that you'll you'll take good care of him." He's he's an incredible man, an incredible coach, and you know, you don't you, making the Sweet Sixteen is is not some sort of championing mediocrity it's not like it's not you'll hear there'll be some edge lords you know in in local media that say you know here we go again celebrating mediocrity there's nothing mediocre about making the sweet 16 and of course the championship game last year and you've run into uh you know the same team they're beasts there are about 300 division one college basketball teams that don't make the tournament 68 yep. do then there are 67 more of them that ultimately have the disappointment at yeah. the end. If the only thing that you care about is winning the championship at the end of the year, college basketball is not a great sport it's for you. Not for you, man. Because there it's are not. 367 teams that aren't going to win the championship at the end of the year, and only one does. No, it's, you can't. It's, you can't judge success that you're that one out of close to 400 teams that wins it at the end of the year. It's so huge. And 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 thinking about now, I mean, obviously, if you're an Aztecs basketball fan, you're a little panicked about what next year looks like already. But you I, were panicked last year. You were panicked about last year. What this year was going to look correct, like. Correct, correct. And and you want to see the next level. One guy that I just, I'm just, you know, Reese Waters really, he, he kind of fell off this year. He started off really, really strong. I thought that was going to be a really great pickup and then just kind of got wheels off at the end and was a little bit wheels off last night and lost his, his shot. But um, one guy that I'm really excited about is Miles Bird. I just, uh, I love him. I think he's got, fun, fun he is, he's fun to watch. He's got attitude. And he tweeted, I'm, I'm telling you, 10 minutes after the game, like, all right, Next season starts now. And I was like, that's what I'm talking about. Which that's is good, what I'm talking about. You know, nowadays kids uh, in kid, college basketball, right? 10 minutes after the game, tweet it, tweet, I'm getting into the portal. Yeah, that's yeah, I'm a lot getting of them into the do, portal. So, that's exactly right. Yeah, you know, keeping your kids is the first thing you have to do as a coach. Then you got to go and try to recruit in the portal. And you've got to recruit new freshmen. It is such a... It's such a tough job. I don't not begrudge a lot of the college basketball coaches for what they're making now because it is a complicated, multitasking, 24-hour-a-day, 365-day-a-year job, and Dutch does it really, really well. No question. No question. So Nothing I, to hang your hat about. Or I, I did want to um, say about Dan Hurley, his, his statement was very classy when he took the podium as well. Said, obviously thrilled with the performance, just playing against Brian's teams. It's always an honor to play San Diego State. They've been one of the best college basketball programs in the country for the last several years. The job he's done there, it's incredible. Couldn't have more respect for their players, how they show up. Obviously, we had our best night, and they didn't have one of their best nights. Obviously, didn't expect a game like this versus those guys, but ultimate respect to San Diego State. 
true champions. Very awesome. classy statement yeah, there. Yeah, very classy move. By UConn coach now, Dan Hurley. Now, wash my underwear, woman. <laughs> <laughs> now back to the business at hand. Go wash my underwear, Mrs. Hurley. So quality, quality season for the Aztecs. Again, very hard to come back the year after reaching the Final Four and do it again because you almost always lose – key players and that makes what UConn is doing they lost NBA players they yes. lost really good players yes. they're the only team to win the championship and get back to at least the elite eight since Florida won back-to-back -back national titles in 2006 and 2007 uh, next up they have a very good offensive team Illinois who beat uh, Iowa State 72-69 in the elite eight Illinois and UConn might be the two best offensive teams in the country but UConn's much better defensively and and I think they're going to probably win that I, game handily again I on do Saturday. Too. What's the, do we see an early line uh, I've not yet seen on the that line game? Yet. UConn against Illinois. The other two games, big surprises. Uh, Clemson knocked off Arizona, the sixth seed Tigers, 77-72. And Alabama, the fourth seed, knocked out the first number one seed in the tournament, beating North Carolina. Sorry, Jordan. 89-87. Both teams uh, going back to the Elite Eight for the first time in a long time. Two decades for Alabama. 1980, the last time Clemson has been in the Elite Eight which sets up a very interesting regional final. Seems like it should be a football game. Yeah. Alabama-Clemson. Fantastic match. Playing match each other for a spot in the final four. Yeah. Uh, it's not, not football season. It is basketball season, and they're going to I, uh, battle it out on Saturday. And, of course, four more Sweet 16 games tonight on the schedule. I don't know if I have a team left. In, I have not looked at my bracket in about a week. I, it is it's uh, atrocious. I mixed it up a little bit. I have uh, you have three have different Houston brackets. winning one of my brackets. I have Tennessee winning one of my brackets. I have UConn winning one of my brackets. Okay. So they're all still alive as the champion at the end. Wait, who do you have? Houston, UConn, and Tennessee. Okay, and as my three champions, they're all still alive in the NCAA tournament. Uh, Tennessee plays Creighton today. Houston plays Duke. Gonzaga against Purdue and NC State against Marquette are your last four Sweet 16 games today. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go take a look Let's at see. I've got those. those. So the line is UConn by eight and a half. Okay. So the Aztecs, what, oh, they opened at like nine. And then and moved to, an 11, up to and 11 and a half. This one starts here at eight and a half. We'll see uh, if UConn gets more money and everyone thinks they're going to win by double digits again, this time against third seeded Illinois. That'll be the first game at 309 on Saturday. And then Clemson, Alabama is the second game at 549. Well, we normally Saturday. we normally do like a hard reset at eight, but we've got a very special guest. Yes, we do. The great, you know, Saris jumping on with us after a full, almost full slate of baseball yesterday. Now we'll get to that next Some smart baseball on a Friday on San Diego's number one sports station. 97.3 The Fam.
All right, halfway home on a Friday. Victory Friday. Ben and Woods, 97.3, the fan. What? Where's my 8 o'clock lobster? Yeah, this is <laughs> not... Got, kind of gotten used to a giant platter of, of lobster and crab at 8 a.m. You can't just take it away from me now. I mean, we're 1-0 and o with the golden sombrero bucket. I'm actually, if we're going to be superstitious, <laughs> I'm going to need to go down to Baja, Baja Rick. Rick's. Baja yeah. Rick, delivery. Can we door dash uh, a giant golden sombrero Please. platter to us at the studios it's right really, now? Really, and really. And go, go right after that again this morning. You know who would love, uh, I think, a golden sombrero bucket? Oh, yeah. Yeah, our I next know. guest. Yeah. He's back this season. Going to be on Thursdays, but a little special Friday edition. It's time for some smart baseball. Probably always great about uh, updating our opens and keeping it fresh, but you don't change perfection, and that one is perfection. I actually, is... did have to change that oh, one you did? just slightly just because, slightly? well, it used to have a Blake Snell drop in there. Oh, I oh about that. see, Remix. That's, that's the attention to detail that Polly provides. We just can't do it anymore. It pained me to pull the. Yeah, pull that's a, that plug, was such a good yeah. one too. To, well, to uh, the Athletics Eno Saris joins us, uh, Eno. Happy opening day. I don't know if it included a, a giant platter of crab and lobster and prime steak like ours did, but I hope you had a good one. No, no it didn't. I'm jealous. You should be. You should be <laughs> Absolutely jealous. Absolutely, yeah. you should be. What What did uh, opening day look like for uh, for you yesterday? Well, uh, I chose not to go to the ballpark for opening day because my choice for ballparks for opening day was Oakland. Ooh. And it just looked so depressing. Uh, plus, uh, my son, who's in the car, say hi, Felix. Hi. Hi, Felix. <laughs> uh, my son had his first fantasy draft. Yes. So, yeah, <laughs> so I decided to stay home and help him do his first fantasy draft. Oh, I bet he slayed it. I bet he absolutely <laughs> slayed oh, it. Oh, you should see his team. <laughs> He does, and he has he has Suarez. He wanted to have some. Uh, he's a bit of a Padres fan. So Good. He, has, he got Suarez, Bogart, and uh, somebody else. Tatis and C. Having, Damn. having <laughs> Eno Saris as your dad and doing a fantasy draft, there should be like, there's no way. You, there's no way you should be able to be allowed to do it. Conflict I mean, of interest. Yeah, something. there's something. There's something. Choosing to go to <laughs> Oakland, though, for opening day yeah. is like going to the breakfast buffet and skipping over the Eggs Benedict and the, the French toast and just going to the cream of wheat. And yeah. And yeah. Having yeah. That. Cereal. Dry <laughs> cereal. Your choice. It sucks, dude. <laughs> It sucks. I saw, I saw yesterday. Uh, the some A's fans protested. They watched the opener in the parking lot. I heard that uh, Oak, they did not even open the gates. It was an hour before first pitch, and they weren't letting fans in. I watched a little bit of the game last night. They drew thirteen thousand people on opening and, day. And that's not that. I don't even know if that's the correct number. One time when they announced. Uh, 14 or 15, uh, I went and counted That's right. head by head the entire place, and I, I came up about three or 4,000 short of that. So I, I think what happens is that's the that's the, the season ticket subscriber base. Yeah. You'd expect most of them to show up on opening day, but yesterday, you know, because of, there was a boycott, and, and the boycott decided that they were going to be out in the parking lot. And so the, I bet you there were – season ticket holders that didn't show up because they're like, oh, it's going to be a mess in the parking lot. I'm going to make a, a bold prediction in honor of Eno's bold predictions that came out in The Athletic. <laughs> My bold prediction is the Padres will have better attendance at Gallagher Square this season than the A's have in their entire ballpark That's the entire year. Pretty safe. All right. Um, by it, the way. It's so sad, though. I mean, just for the, the team employees. I mean. Terrible. I've been talking to them, and some of them, I was like, well, you know, you do this. You could you could do this for you know it's a portable skill you can do it for somebody else and they're like no no, no I don't love what I do specifically I love baseball yeah, yeah that's <laughs> such I'm a not, bummer and I don't want to move so yeah I feel for a lot of them so your little season preview bold predictions uh, column in the athletics started out pretty well because uh, I saw you had uh, 
The Pirates is a surprise playoff team potentially, and they had a nice come from behind extra inning win on the road against the Marlins. You had a Vlad Guerrero as your kind of bold pick for AL MVP. He got off to a good start with an absolutely monster home run. Well done, Eno. <laughs> yeah, I was feeling good about it. Uh, but, you know, I got a lot of crap for saying the Red Sox rotation might not be as bad as people think, but Brian Bayo goes out and gets the win. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Bayo's pretty nasty. I watched I watched some of his game. I, I flipped last night. It was great. I mean, we went to the game and then came home, and I just remembered I've got the MLB package so I can watch the rest of these games, and I flipped to all of them now. It didn't go so well in Colorado. I was keeping tabs on – keeping oh or for Colorado. I was keeping tabs on, on you know, what the NL West is doing. And my bold – Other than the 14-run inning game they gave up, it was actually a pretty close pretty game. Pretty good game. Yeah, West. that's exactly right. <laughs> I, I my hangover theory for the Diamondbacks uh, is not holding water yet. They did not look hungover at all after a, a long season last year. They're going to be pretty formidable, as are the Dodgers, as potentially are the Giants. Um, you know, nice comeback, come from behind victory for the Pods yesterday. Though, did you get a chance to watch any of that game? Oh yeah, definitely watched a lot of that game. Um, and I I thought they you know one place that I I hope. Uh, they're in good spot, and it looks good on opening day. Is the sort of middle of the bullpen. Um, you know, that's where, you know, for the Giants, it started to fall apart yeah. a little bit. Um, and uh, for the Padres, it held together. I thought Yuki Matsui looked good. Um, Adrian Morahan in his final tune-up, um, you know, in one of the uh, spring games, didn't he have like four strikeouts? He or did. And, he had two two yeah, really so. nice outings, and they, they, they did send him down. They optioned him because he has. Uh, I'm always talking about Morahan. They're always sending him down. Yeah. Well, this is the last time. So this is the last option. Uh, you know, he's got one more year of options or whatever. So I wanted to put you on the spot since uh, you didn't include any Padres bold predictions, but I wanted to see if you can make one bold prediction. But the San Diego Padres, it, doesn't, it, it could be negative, it could be positive, although you know our audience, if you want to be liked, it probably has to be positive. So <laughs> anything that you can boldly predict about the San Diego Padres for 2024, Eno Saris? Well, I can tell you what my 11th one was that I took out last minute, and uh, it was that Johnny Brito uh, out-earns the entire Washington Nationals rotation. Out-earns. So uh, I just I really like Brito. Uh, we sat behind home plate uh, for one of his starts uh, in Tempe Diablo, um, and I saw him go toe to toe with Mike Trout. He was I think body language said he was a little bit nervous, but he he got him out. Um, and I really like he throws high sinkers uh, with some of the best in the game, and that's the one way that I think a left hander can throw sinkers to right handers, or a right hander can throw sinkers to left handers. Um, and so I think that Brito's uh, cutter and high sinker package is good enough. His curve is really good. I, they're going to need him. They, they will. I would say he's their, six, he's their sixth starter. I, I would have chosen him over Waldron myself, uh, though it's fun to have a knuckleballer in the league. Um, and, uh, and so I think Brito's going to get like 100 innings this year and be like a, a really good starter for them. It, it's probably their best sixth starter they've had you know, in this run. I think everyone in the audience agrees with you and are now kind of wishing after his last two relief appearances that they would actually use him in a, a starting capacity. And, and they, they've, they've tried to wedge him into kind of a couple of high leverage situation. It hasn't gone great for him. The stuff is obviously there when you watch him pitch, but uh, how are they going to deploy him? That's what we're going to ask the skipper in about 51 minutes, you know, is, all right, you've you've kind of groomed this guy to be a starter, and you put him into two games in high leverage. It hasn't worked out. Was what's the plan? Yeah, that's what I, that's why I mentioned the Mike Trout at bat. He had this uh, Mike Trout at bat that was super sort of high strung, and I think he had uh, like a uh, like a pitch clock violation, and um, and maybe some maybe he allowed a stolen base. He looked a little bit flustered, so I actually think that. Starting is a better situation sometimes for a player like that because if you're bringing him into the eighth, it's like easier to get flustered, right? Sure. If you're if you're in the second and you give up a, a hit or two, you, you know it is still high, it can be the, it can be high leverage, but you're like, well, it's only the second. Like there's a whole lot of ball game after this, you know. If I give up one run, like we're still in it, you know. Whereas if it's in the eighth or ninth, you'd be like, hey, we have one run, we're out of this. So, um, you know, I think I think I think starting fits his temperament better. That's 
uh, something for them to know better than I know from the outside. Uh, but it, I bet you it's something they're talking about. Smart Baseball, you know, Sarah's uh, with The Athletic is with us. And uh, not as many uh, dramatic rule changes as last year. But uh, what are your thoughts, because I know you have some, on the additional enforcement of the blocking of the bases rule out on the base paths? I don't know that I saw it come into play yesterday. I saw a couple of where it might have been called and it wasn't called. What did you see? Surprisingly, yeah, I saw one too. Yeah, I mean, we had some in spring. That uh, there was one against Lindor that I was like, "That looks like BS to me." I'm, I, I think it's going to be a problem at some point early in the season. I'm hoping they kind of uh, relax and, and and don't enforce this too hard because, it, it, you know, there's just so so many ways that a throw can take you into the base path, into the lane, and uh, on some level, the the defenders are taught to like get the like to receive the ball in front of the in front of the bag. Right? Sure. So you're kind of you're asking them to undo like years and years of training, um, if you're saying that they they have to keep that lane totally open. So um, I, I'm hoping that it won't be enforced as strictly as they sort of said it would. Um, you know, the other thing is, uh, you know, you you have the pitch clock changing a little bit, um, a little bit shorter. And um, one thing that happened last year was they were. Uh, the base runners were successful 80% of the time on every stolen base and 85% of the time on third base. And the break-even point is 75. So I expect people to run even more this year because the way that baseball works is you keep pushing and pushing and pushing until you hit that break-even point. I know we got to explain uh, things, though, to our audience. So the break-even point means – where it's that, where it becomes a valuable play as opposed to a, a not valuable play. You've got to make it at least three quarters of the time, correct? Yes, because the, 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 the negative value of the out is so bad. And if you think about it, you only have, you know, three outs in an inning, um, you know, advancing one base, you probably want to advance three bases for every out, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, in order to make it valuable. So, that's that's the thinking that's the math behind it and uh if you're at 80 85 percent you're going to keep going so especially uh you know running towards uh, from second to third if that's a free base basically uh you're going to do it because now you can score on a, on a sacrifice fly so uh you know there's a lot of uh there's a lot more feeling that's going to happen this year i think you know we're so glad to have you back this season uh we'll get you into your regular thursday slot next week and are you going to be in town i am excellent I'm be in town I'm covering – what's this Tuesday thing? I'm, I'm covering the game. Uh-oh. Oh, God. Oh, oh you're going to be no. there on Tuesday? You're when, coming on Tuesday? When ben and Woods and Katie, Paul are throwing Katie out Wu the – is uh, already going to be there for the athletic. The first pitch? We don't oh. – how many athletic reporters do we need to cover our first pitch? Yeah, we're going to be there first pitch, buddy. Uh, oh, you're doing the first pitch? Yeah, we're doing the first <laughs> oh, pitch. No. Oh, He's yeah. going to break down our stuff plus. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh he's I'm laughing too much about that. this. I'm oh, going. I'm do a breakdown. Yeah, breakdown. No, oh, you, don't, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. Oh, it'd be my honor. Can we get pitching ninja there too? That's who I really want to get there. Maybe Nolan Ryan can come by and give us some pointers. Don't fifty seven. Oh. Oh, who's that guy who threw it into the balls with the photographer? Don't do that. Oh again. no, no. There's Baba Booey from the Stern Show. I mean, that's, there's a. I'll be watching them all. As I said, weekend. no one ever throws a good pitch. If you throw a good pitch, it's forgotten in five seconds. It's only the bad <laughs> ones that get remembered. You know. Oh, this is gonna suck. Well, we'll Sounds see. Like you're planning a bad one. No, 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 no. I want to be forgotten instantly. Is I'm my so goal. Nervous now. We will see you uh, on Tuesday, my friend, and look for us. We will be down there, and yeah, get your 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 cameras ready. You're gonna see some stuff plus like you've never seen. Right. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, Eno. Smart baseball brought to you oh. all season long by Seven Mile Casino. Appreciate Eno. Appreciate Seven Mile Casino, and looking forward to having him back all year. It's such a good point, though. We all grew up, you know, talking about the counting stats, how many home runs, RBI, and how many stolen bases. And if you stole 40 bases, man, you're a great base stealer. But if you're getting caught 20 times, (laughs) you're not a good base stealer. Because if you're not making it at least three out of four times, you're hurting your team. You're not helping your team by stealing bases. Now, if you only steal 10 bags, but you're only thrown out once, you're helping your team on the base pass. It's not... It's not the number of steals. It's how often you make it versus how often you try that determines whether you're helping your team or hurting your team on the base paths. Yeah, 100%. And and there's guys that do it really, really well. And there's guys that aren't fast but are really good base dealers. You know, they're smart about when they run. Manny Machado is one of those guys. 
when he runs, you're like, oh, no, no, no. Oh, he beat it, beat it by a mile. He knows when to go, knows the right counts. And uh, there's definitely an art form to it. But with these new blocking rules, I think he's right. I think we said it a couple weeks ago. Why not? Go. I mean, go, go, go. If they're blocking the bag, you're going to get that bag anyway. Speaking of rules, I already had our first controversy in baseball last night and perhaps the most dramatic game of opening day in Texas with the defending champions. We can talk about that coming up, and we're going to give away those Tom Segura tickets, last pair before they go on sale to the public later today. That is all coming up next with Ben and Woods. We'll be back after a check of traffic with Kelly here on 97.3 The Fan.
That's your station for Tom Petty, as usual. It's Ben and Woods, 97.3 The Fan. You're just criticizing yourself. I don't understand it. I understand. I just don't know why it doesn't rotate. Also, Tom your, Petty, uh, all your the time. station for Mike Schilt at 9 a.m., getting ready for the manager's report, and your station for Dylan Cease this afternoon on Gwen and Chris. Nice. On a Friar Friday. Love it. Get to know uh, the newest member of the San Diego Padres, scheduled to make his debut, weather permitting, tomorrow. On the mound uh, against the San Francisco Giants, but he'll make his 97-3 the fan debut sometime this afternoon. I don't have a specific time, but obviously Gwen and Chris are on a, uh, starting at 2 o'clock. So you can uh, tune in at 2, and they'll probably have more specific details on the Dylan Cease appearance. But looking forward to hearing uh, from the Padres' new starting pitcher. Yeah, I saw him the other day walking by. Handsome fella. Uh, really good stuff. Uh, talked to Mike Schilt about him for just a second when we when we popped down to the field the other day and yeah man I'm 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 expecting big things from Dylan Cease and you know you'd love to see a little little length from him in in his first start out there that's kind of what he's known for it what are you guys thinking about tonight's start with Joe Musgrove based on you know some rough spring outings and then a couple of decent ones at the end and then kind of a rough go again not worried you know about it. You, yeah I'm really not either it's the it's the Dodgers they're going to grind you down they're they're a it's really good Korea, team it's the Dodgers you can't, you can't more, judge anything off you can't games. more throw out a start than you can throw out a start in Korea against the Dodgers yep. uh, but Still, I mean, you know, you'd like to see him get off to a, a good start. I consider this his first kind of yeah. real start of the year. And he seems like he's a dog. Yeah, he, he is he, a dog. He, he rises wants to win to this the occasion. Yep. This is his home opener. You know, he's going to be fine. Tony Gwynn opening day. Yes. So, uh, yeah, a lot of people, I heard, <laughs> I heard that, and of course, I was always a big fan of Tony Gwynn opening day, but... Wasn't that technically yesterday if we had a home game in no, Korea? No, it t- today is Tony Gwynn opening day. But I don't know that Tony Gwynn opening day really exists anymore. And I don't want to rain on anyone's parade. Why do you hate Tony Gwynn all or, of a sudden? Interesting, or man. act like I'm disrespecting the great Tony Gwynn. But Tony Gwynn's point was, yeah, you get a sellout crowd on opening day and it's there's 55,000 people. But the next day, it's those 12,000 who show up on day two who are the real <laughs> baseball fans. That was Tony's point. Guess what? Probably going to be absolutely packed at Petco Park and look pretty much exactly like opening day again yeah, today. It, it, the spirit of Tony Gwynn has changed it, a little that's bit. That's exactly right. It's no longer just the diehards <laughs> down there like, hell yeah, all you losers yesterday at opening day. It's more of an honorary Tony Gwynn yeah. opening day now because yeah. it's once again going to be, uh, you know, an absolute party scene at Petco Park on a Friday night. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Uh, opening day, the, hat, the opening week hats that they're giving out, it's going to be... Another opening day, essentially, tonight at Petco Park. 640 first pitch here on 97.3 The Fan. Eco Water SoCal pregame show with Sam Levitt at 540 today. All right, last night we talked about some of the games. Uh, D-backs just obliterating the Rockies. Uh, Dodgers got home runs Uh, from Mookie Betts. Quickly, though, I wanted to read this to you guys. Uh, The 14 runs for Arizona in the third inning. You ready for this? Single, single, walk, single, double, single, single, fly out, double, single, single, walk, single, single, double, sack fly, single, ground out. Oh, my God. Having to sit through that if you're a Colorado Rockies fan. I'm sure you turned the game off by that point. But um, that was a drubbing, a drubbing, and Arizona looked really, really good. (laughs) Opening day record, (laughs) right? The biggest inning on an opening day in baseball history. I was at a Padres home opener once. I think they scored 13 in the first against the Cardinals at uh, the old Murph once when I was growing up. But 14 in one inning is very, very unsurmountable yeah, for the uh, for the Colorado tough. Rockies. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Dodgers uh, look good against the Cardinals. They beat up uh, on on Miles, Miles Michaelis. Michaelis yeah. uh, home runs from Betts and Freeman both in the third inning. Otani reached three times, uh, scored on the Freeman home run. Orioles got a great debut from Corbin Burns. You acquire an ace, you put him out there, you'd love to see six innings, one hit, 11 strikeouts in That's your first, incredible day. <laughs> first outing. is not a bad way to start against the Angels to give up a Trout home run, but of course, Trout homers, Angels lose by eight. Yep. You'll probably hear that story more than once this season. <laughs> so gnarly. Yankees beat the Cubs, fi- or no, Yankees beat the Astros, Astros five to four on a... V- this is unbelievable. We the, wa- we were watching the, way the end they of this won game. The game on a Juan Soto, Juan Soto, absolutely gunning a guy down at home plate. It's not what you'd expect. And I told my my Yankees friend Scott, don't expect that all season long. I mean, he's not a horrible defender, but that's that's not the way Juan Soto is going to win the games for you this year. Hannah even Hannah even said we were watching the game in the hotel room. The end of it. She goes, I never saw that kind of energy. Like, he was in the outfield dancing, dancing, dapping guys up. 
She goes, I never saw that here. I go, no, you know what? Never it's liked him. priceless, priceless, priceless. Uh, but, yeah, he had a good day. He drove in a run as well. I think he was on three times. Um, so, yeah, they they were down 4 nothing early, came back and won again. On a, on a Juan Soto outfield put out assist, or assist at home yeah, play. Yeah. At home. But I thought the game of the day, and it also had the most controversy, came in the uh, defending World Series champion Texas Rangers matchup against the Cubs, which the Cubs trailed three to two in the ninth inning. And you had a play at, at home play. There's a runner at second, I think. And the batter swung, and the ball got away from the catcher. But it was clearly foul tipped, he and, foul the, tipped and the umpires missed it, and the catcher didn't really know what was going on, so he didn't go and pick up the ball because normally catchers don't go racing after foul tips because the ball is dead. But the umpire missed it, and the runner came all the way around from second to score the tying run, and obviously the Rangers they were pretty upset about it because it's not a reviewable play, right? which doesn't make much sense. I get that you don't want to be reviewing everything and you know add 20 minutes back to the games after you're trying to speed things up, but that one is so quick to check, and you could clearly see on the, you know, the super slow-mo, the ball changes directions when it goes off the edge of the, bat, the bat, and that's why the catcher couldn't catch it. You can't let a team have a huge advantage just because the umpire happened to miss the sound of the tick of the ball on the bat at home plate You know, going 95 miles an hour. So... Does baseball have to make some sort of change in the replay rules so they can somehow quickly address that if they miss a foul tip at home plate? Yeah, I mean, it was gnarly when they slowed it down and they showed the ball when he tipped into the dirt and then the it, the ball just goes, it goes 90 degrees. Jonah Heim, the catcher, runs kind of half-ass after, then turns around and looks at the umpire like begging like, hey, man, that was foul. Next thing you know, the guy's tearing ass around third. He comes around, he scores the tying run. And so I think a lot of people were... A lot of people were down on on Jonah Heim for like you just make the play and then talk to the umpire after. Now then the Rangers come up in the the in the bottom of the ninth and they're down a run or something. Travis Jankowski of all people comes up and hits a missile out of the yard to tie the game. They end up winning in an extras on a huge knock from Jonah Heim. So it was a phenomenal phenomenal game and Craig Council uh, pushed some weird buttons there late. Um, at throwing Drew Smiley baseball's in. Baseball's highest paid manager. Yeah, baseball's highest paid manager. Kind of, kind of blew one there. Um, so it was, it was an awesome, awesome day of baseball. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, the Rangers all was well that ended well, I guess. But it feels like they could, you know, the NBA has sort of quietly, and the NFL even as well has quietly turned the sky judge into a thing. Yeah, like if they know they can correct something instantly, and like. Hit a button that it tells the umpire or the referees or the scorer's table, you got that wrong, just come over here and we will change it for you. No one needs to throw a challenge flag. No one needs to, you know, make the, the signal, putting the headphones on. Just fix it, fix it so the game is right. Is there a way you can kind of fairly implement that? Because when you do that, there will always be the people that go, well, why'd you fix it for this team? And you missed the fixing for us. You know, right. they didn't throw it. You know, they didn't call for a replay and you fixed it. But if you can get it right and you can get it right within ten seconds, please just do that. Yeah, just get please it. Please right. do that. And it, that was one of the plays where you could have gotten right. You could have gotten it right in less than ten to fifteen seconds, and just gone on with the game. But for some reason, no, it's not allowed to check a foul tip at home plate on the replay machine. Alan uh, on Twitter says, "Can we give Tyler Wade some props? He looks like a dog out there." Yeah, I mean, you're seeing a guy. That knows his time is probably limited, at least in a starting role. When Manny comes back to third base, it's not going to be a question who they're going to run out there. But I look, I am liked what I've seen so far from Tyler Wade. Speed does kill, and he did, you know, his hustle and his his speed did lead to a huge run for the Padres yesterday. So keep it up, you know, keep Props it up to Tyler Wade. Maybe we should give him these Tom Segura tickets as a reward. If he wants them, they're his. Uh, Tyler, if you're listening, you call in right now. Uh, and... I think I'm supposed to give them oh. to a tier one, right, actually. Fine. So uh, it is time to call in. Last time this week, chance to win tickets to see comedian Tom Segura at Pachanga Arena on November 8th. Tickets go on sale today. At AXS.com, access.com, but be the fourth caller, 833-288-0973. Right now, fourth caller, 833-288-0973. You can win our last pair of tickets this week to Tom Segura at Pachanga Arena. We'll come back uh, since the manager's report is nine. Paulie's going to get a little uh, rival report early. Some headlines for you when we come back with Ben Woods on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
There's no way you really like that song, right? I just referenced off the air. Mm. We built this city by <laughs> Starship, and Ben goes, "Such a great song." I, Under his I know that. Um, I know that it has been ranked uh, by numerous publications as, in fact, the worst song of all time. <laughs> Without this city, Without I this city, genuinely oh and truly Without do enjoy city. that song. There's no, and I can't help myself. I love Knee deep in the hoopla. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like diarrhea in a song. <laughs> Call us irresponsible. It is like di- if diarrhea was a song. And I like that they have the, uh, the the chopper guy on the uh, the traffic report at the end. It's the city, by the way. It's the, I I like I I like. Megan likes it city. too. Paul's wife, yeah. Megan, also <laughs> likes the two of you are the you, only you ones left. Hang on, <laughs> I'll give it to you clean, Polly. I like. We built this city on rock and roll. Perfect. That's what we needed. That's exactly what we needed. This hour on 97.3 The Fan is brought to you by your local San Diego County, the UPS store. Your local San Diego County, the UPS store locations are hosting a shred event. Uh, runs through tomorrow, 50% off shredding services. Visit the upsstore.com for the location nearest you. See store for details. We'll check traffic. And then Polly's got some headlines on the Rindle Report ahead of our Mike Schilt Manager's Report at 9 a.m., Next here on 97.3 The Fan. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Danik. The roads start to wind down pretty nicely. Just one problem on the coastline. Step on five past Poinsettia. This vehicle spun out, hit the center divide. Now it's facing the wrong way in the HOV lane. Good morning. I'm Kelly Danik with Ben and Wood, San Diego's number one sports station. 97.3 The Fan. And get things started here with our... Edition, today's edition oh, of boy. the Rindle Report. Now tune into the month greatest. Welcome to the Rindle Report with Paul Rindle. Hi, Paul. All right. Two stories from the world of sports that we haven't gotten to yet. We'll start off in Major League Baseball. And one story that you didn't know you needed. Are you laughing, Biatch? It's the Rindle Report. Hey, Paul, how you doing? Okay, how are you? On 97.3 The Fan. Are you ready to bless the mood? I need some help, please. <laughs> that was good. Can I get a hoi? All right. All right. All right. Gentlemen, i got a couple of quick stories here for you. We will start off. Uh, I guess this is kind of college basketball. So North Carolina, they were getting ready for their game at, uh, they're in the West region, I guess. They're playing at Staples Center, yeah. Crypto.com Arena yesterday. in Los Angeles. And uh, saw a report here from somebody covering the games. And all his quotes said was one North Carolina player with the quote of the day here at Crypto.com Arena. Quote, I just took a S where Braun takes an S. Been there. Says, Not there. I'll, I'll let you guys fill in the blanks. Poop. And that's uh, college athletics at its best, I think, right there. I think so, too. I do that. I said that at fantasy camp um, <laughs> when we're back in the Padres clubhouse. Says, oh, man, I'm in the... I had got relegated to the Brett Sullivan stall, which is like the first, <laughs> like the first one, like the non-luxurious. Yes. One. You go into the Manny and Tati stall, yeah. and there's like iPads in there. There's different sprays, better quality of toilet paper. I mean, there's just a clear hierarchy in the locker room of like you can't, you're not allowed to go there. Like that's where <laughs> I go. You go here into the the very first stall, very thin toilet paper. <laughs> Sand all over the floor, like it's not the same. That makes sense. It does. Yeah. Yes. I. You ever have those nice, really nice public restrooms where the doors go all the way, ceiling to floor, oh, and yeah. you go in, it's like your own room. There yeah. might be yeah. nothing better in the world. The, those dream. are so great. The drug addict's yeah. dream, also. Ben, um, those 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 stalls. Ben Higgins. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's where Ben. Does so you go get drugs. a little bump in there, so nobody can see you. I get it. By the way, since you mentioned LeBron, did you see LeBron broke basketball news yesterday? No. He, uh, he tweeted out that uh, they Duquesne had hired a new head coach before any of the other oh, really? insiders did. Happened to be his old high school teammate, Drew Joyce, who got the job. So LeBron had a little insider know? knowledge that he shared with everybody yesterday on a tweet. Huh. Taking Wo- Woj's job. Now. wonder if he's supposed to do that. No, nothing's going to happen to I him. Don't, I, you know what? LeBron. I don't. If I'm Duquesne, you don't probably care? okay yeah. with LeBron breaking any news that it Fair brings enough. attention to my program. Yeah. Fair enough. All right, uh, we, it was not that long ago that we were talking about, next two stories here, kind of updates on things we've talked about. Um, 
parents with children in sports, whether it's Hello. in particular for high school, high school parents. Not yet. Oh, not yet. I've told you the horror stories of me. I coached high school baseball for six years. The parents were the worst part. The coaches were fine. The opposing coaches were fine. Even the umpires were fine. It was the parents. They were the worst. And uh, I'll give you an example of why that still stands true today, because there was a post going viral of a parent that had a plane fly a message over a high school baseball game. And I'll put it up here on the uh, stream for everybody to see. Yeah. It says Carmel baseball is daddy ball. Oh, Somebody paid my God. to have that plane fly around. And by the way, it was a JV baseball game. No, it was so not. daddy ball means the coach's son is on the team and getting shortstop, an un, batting three hole, an unearned I don't amount of know playing the time, etc. Okay. I don't know if a kid was well, cut. And that's what daddy ball is. That's what daddy yeah. ball is. Yeah. But it could be yeah. maybe the kid was cut and the dad didn't think he should be. Maybe the kid's on the team but he never plays and the dad thinks he should be. But dude, oh my god, I well, cannot uh, believe that. Level whether or not you. I mean, and there have been coaches, obviously, who have played favoritism with their played favorites with their own kid. It's happened many times. Whether that's true or not, whether you believe it's true or not, the idea of flying a banner over the game and embarrassing the kid. That's the worst part. Think about how awful that is. Kid doesn't. Kid doesn't have any choice in the matter. Dad tells him, you're playing, you're playing. I mean, what is he supposed to do? Stand up? Dad, I don't deserve to be batting third in this lineup. You really should have me batting eighth, to be fair, to the other kids. No. He has to go out there and play wherever dad says he's going to play. For another parent to go out and embarrass and humiliate the kid by doing that, it's awful. It's he, horrible. Here's a, the lesson, though. People are saying in the chat, like, no, that's incredibly based. I don't know anything about the Carmel program, but I do know Daddy Ball is a real thing. And... Um, Somebody said politics in baseball is real. Politics in every walk of life is real. Yeah. It really is. I have talked to minor ex minor leaguers that have said, "Dude, here were my numbers. Here were this guy's numbers. This guy was the quintessential politician in the clubhouse with the management. I wasn't. He got the call up." I didn't. Like, it's real in every walk of life. It's real in radio. It's real in accounting. I mean, it's just everywhere you go. As a The way that embarrasses your kid, hey, Your kid's toast. But as a coach, as a coach myself that's planning on coaching a few more years up until, you know, I don't know, maybe he's 12 or something. Go ahead. You want to weigh in? Put your what? mouth on the mic. What yeah. if the coach's son is the best player? Well, that's the thing. I think the other parents, you know, like, you know, well, he probably deserves to be there, you know? And yeah. I take it. I'm way harder on Bo than I am of any of the other kids I coach. And Bo is better. And All right, oh. relax. People are listening to this show. I think, he works um, hard. He, he really does. works hard. And this is going to sound like an insult, but it's a compliment to you, Woods. You're not, <laughs> you don't play oh. politics, and yet you still have been very successful. In yeah, fact, you're I almost, try not to. You're almost anti in that you, you've antagonized a lot of people in town <laughs> and somehow still have managed to be successful <laughs> without you, playing politics. That's maybe the... You're welcome. That's <laughs> maybe the best compliment that it's, I've I'm ever trying, received. I was trying to. No, it's true. It's true. It it's, sucks, it's, man. It's, it's tough, man. But like... I think it's the coach's job, too. You have to set the... I was talking to Kurt Bavakwa about this the other day. He said, you have to set the precedent early. You know, the the we don't need you to scream throw strikes at the kids. They know that their job is to throw strikes. It's not that easy. So if you're in the stands, pipe down a little bit. Watch their kids. I don't need you poking your head in the dugout saying, hey, why did you send him on that? I'm the coach. If you want to coach, you get your ass out here and coach. It gets worse the older the kids 100%. get, too. Because, like, this, like, again, I'm looking at this from the frame of high school baseball. Well, like, and also, I'm the coach. And if I tell your kid to take, I don't need you in the bleachers saying, what are you taking for? What are you for? taking for? Right. The other oh. thing, Paulie, the flip side to that coin is when you have your kids, all you want is the best for them. It never comes from a place, really. I think of anything other than I just love him and want him to be successful or her. I want them to be successful. 
it manifests itself in terrible behavior, though. Like, that but sucks. But some parents not, don't just want their kid to be happy. They're also, like, counting on, I need a scholarship for my kid. And if yeah. he's not getting the playing time, all of a sudden they're feeling, like, Bro, the pressure it's of, JV like. Baseball. It's JV baseball. But it's JV baseball. They start feeling and, that and, pressure. And, and, and Kurt told me, he said, and, and there was another guy um, who coached at Torrey Pines High for years. I think it was oh. before oh, I, um, your time. Ben, I talked to him. I think I know exactly who you're talking about. I forget the name. He said, look, man. The good kids with the talent will all they'll it will always yeah. kind of rise up like it will rise above. And again, though, I mean, I tell you stories of friends that that have played in the minor leagues and said, "Oh, I wasn't a I wasn't a big rah rah guy, so I didn't get the call up." Even though I doubled <laughs> this guy's numbers, he got the call up. He was a better clubhouse fit, mm-hmm. and so it's just hard, man. And I know I know some hard days are ahead. You know, it, as a youth sports like, coach, unless and you're going to be a high school coach, like I would just. My advice, take it or leave it, is at some point you'll know when the time is. Just be a parent. Just be, you don't have just to be the watch. Coach. Let them, let the coaches be the coach, and then just go be the parent. Yeah, because it's it, tough, it is tough man. to separate. I 100% it. hire that plane. Dude, I. <laughs> and 100% hires that plane. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had, a, I had a kid's dad, like, one rule, the one of the only rules we had was you do not step on the field unless your kid, like, Concussed or something. Right, he gets Obviously. he wears one of the like. Dome. You do not come onto the into the dugout to give them their Gatorade. If they forgot it, they'll be thirsty. They won't forget it next time. Correct. Like, you do not step on the field. You also don't like wait for me by my car. Correct. If you want to talk to me about something, there was a process. You email me, email set me. up a meeting. Yeah. It, I'm totally willing to talk. Not as I'm walking to my car. I was at se- uh, second base raking after a game, and this dad mark like beeline right towards me and like, broke both rules at the same time. Oh my yeah, god! Both rules. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly right. Right. I'm like, oh, is, is this happening? Are right we doing now? this? Are we doing this? My assistant coach got right in his face and shoved him back and said, "Get off this field, crazy right dude. now." And crazy. it was because his kid didn't play or something. You know, it's just like, dude. The embarrassment. I'm like, I'm gonna embarrass you in front of your children. That right poor <laughs> kid whose dad flew that, or mom, you know, who flew that plane over is like. Sick, dude. Thanks. No, he's the best player. He's gonna go play somewhere else. <laughs> well, we don't off, know. So. We don't. We just don't yeah, know. Well, if it weren't for Daddy Ball, he could be on that team. Awful. Right, turn her mic off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then finally, I told you we we're gonna update some stories. Uh, it is Easter this weekend, and a week or two ago, we talked about um, a new body spray that was gonna be sold in five below stores. Mm. Peeps body spray. Peeps. And well, you after- like a. I like a good peep. A plain you like yellow. Just a plain yellow yeah. peep, I believe. A plain yellow peep. We'll find out in about bunny, an hour. No, from now. A chick, not bunny. Chick, well, not I went bunny. to yeah. uh, I went to Five Below and I came up with some peeps body spray here. I have uh, they don't have okay, strawberry cream scented is the uh, mm. pink flavor. And we have marshmallow scented is the blue flavor. I was wondering if you guys were I'll try, try. which one you want. Uh, I'll do the marshmallow blue. or I'll take marshmallow. It's like Thank City you. Connect. I'll do the pink then. Oh, Nice catch. Good hands. Mm. See if this works. Smells fantastic. <laughs> oh, don't do it. Oh, he did it. Sweet. You sprayed it in your mouth. It's sweet. Doesn't taste Definitely bad. sweet. Does it smell like something you'd wear? I mean, I mean not me. It smells the, like uh, something a dancer would the wear. The Friday <laughs> prank move is as soon as, as we're <laughs> leaving the studio this morning, just... Uh, douse everything in here oh, before would. the Annie and Elston program. <laughs> Adam is running the board today for them. So, oh, Paul, here. yeah, make the entire board smell like marshmallow peep. I taste it. It doesn't taste bad. It tastes better than an actual <clears throat> peep because it smells so good. Mm, it well, does not smell. Bad at all. It smells really good. It's probably like a dollar too. Says, Happy Easter, everybody. <laughs> It smells a little bit like explicit. <laughs> sure does. <laughs> sure <laughs> does. Speaking of uh, story updates for you, since we mentioned it yesterday, our our, our friend Steve Sugimoto uh, was competing in his very first professional Japan Tour tournament. Second round, got through uh, 12 holes, but they had rain. Didn't finish. He's still at even par with like seven to play tomorrow in Japan. So he's going to need a... Uh, couple of birdies, I think, to make the cut. But I was scanning on their website, and you can click on his like profile, his tour profile, and there was a picture of him, a nice smiling picture of Steve Sugimoto, and then some of his details, like age, birth date. Then home school, it says University of San Diego. So it's close. They're, they're gonna, it's close. There's definitely a San Diego in there, but he right. went to San Diego State University. Correct. Height, 163 centimeters. 
Okay. He's not a tall guy. He's not a tall guy. Uh, weight, 78 kilograms. No idea the conversion. And uh, and blood type, A. <laughs> it's, it's on there. It's, it's actually on his tour bio. He is blood type A. So, That's on his bio. So in case for some reason he gets run over by a golf cart and they need to quickly look Let's up. Pull up his bio. Transfusion on the course. Well, I mean. What blood type is he? We can look that up now you, you on the sp- Japan tour site. We laugh, but I don't know my blood type. Do you know your blood type, babe? A positive, baby. A positive. Paul, I you know, know your. I know your blood. You type. know my yeah, blood you're type. B negative. <laughs> <laughs> look at this guy over there. Give me a rim shot, Paulie. Look at him. B negative. That's true. <laughs> that is true. Do you know yours, Paulie? I have no idea. I have no idea. Not a clue. You know yours, Ben? I don't know yeah. mine either. I don't. I don't think I'm O. I, I I definitely knew it at one point. I think I'm A. Of I don't know if I'm positive or negative. I think I'm positive. <laughs> B negative, by the B way. Negative. It's great. <laughs> Is there such thing as a B negative? Yeah. Is there? Yeah. All right. A A positive, A negative, B positive, B negative. Then there's A B positive and A B negative. O positive, o positive and O negative. O negative is the universal donor. They can give to anyone. Ooh, I would and like I think to be that. A, a B positive is the universal receipt. Receiver they can get from anyone. Hey, look at the Ooh, big like brain on Brad. <laughs> you smart than that. <laughs> All right, we have to go to break because we need to get serious here. Yeah, Mike Schultz coming on. on. Come on, here we go. Lock it in. Can't have any fun with the skipper. Lock Actually, you have a little in. bit of fun after an opening day six to four win. Our managers report. Mike Schilt will join us when we come back. Final hour of the week of Ben Woods coming up next right here on San Diego's number one sports station, ninety-seven three, the fan.
So excited for what we've got coming up this season. Uh, we've got a great lineup of, of regular guests throughout baseball and Padres season, but uh, the most anticipated will be Friday mornings when we will have the manager's report brought to you by SDCCU. It's not big bank banking. It's better. And joining us right now, Thanks to San Diego County Credit Union is the manager of the San Diego Padres coming off yesterday's 6 to 4 opening day win over the San Francisco Giants. Mike Schilt is with us here on 973 the Fan. Mike, congratulations on the win yesterday. A really fun day for all of us out at the ballpark. Yeah, thanks guys. Good to be with you and it was a fun day. Guys played really well in front of a Lovely, wonderful crowd and a beautiful day. Now, it was a long day for us. We had the broadcast at 6 a.m. And, and we're there the whole time. What does opening day look like for the skipper? Um, well, it's, uh, you know, it's tried to like any other game, but clearly opening day is a special day and even more special yesterday with, you know, again, a chance to remember Peter Seidler and have the moment of silence for the game and reflect on him and, you know, remind ourselves one of the reasons we, uh, you know, we're going to do this well this year. Um, but other than that, it's just trying to normalize it. You know, it's a, it's clearly a, a game of importance. Everybody's excited. Getting back to a home opener is, is special. But I really just want to make sure you're uh, taking care of business and dotting the I's and crossing the T's. Well, and, and you know, two, a really tough customer yesterday in Logan Webb. I mean, it, it, I tweeted yesterday, it looked like we were hitting weighted balls. I mean, you can't get barrel on that guy. And to kind of grind out a couple of runs, uh, was it was tough sledding, certainly. What do you tell your guys uh, in, in instances like that where it's like, hey, man, just is it just go up there, keep fighting, keep putting the ball in play? Because I, I got to tell you, as, as a, a longtime ob- observer myself, it did feel um, it did feel like, man, that was really tough sledding up there against him. Yeah, it's got a good arm, you know, like you said, a heavy ball, you know, big power sinker. Um, I was really pleased. I mean, you're going to run into good pitching. You want to be a a great team. You got to be, be, you know, good, great, you know, pitching. This guy's a great pitcher. Um, and I was really pleased with the fact that we got better as the game went. The bats got better. Guys were communicating with each other about what they were seeing. That's really effectively a big part of us is, is the guys just seeing what he's doing, reacting to what he's doing, making adjustments if necessary to what he's doing, and talking to each other about what they're seeing using their collective baseball cues is really important. You know, for the game. You know, I thought we had a good plan. That's that's a job. At Rodriguez, our hitting coach, did a great job. But the guys really, um, you know, knew what they were seeing. Had some had some uh, history with him, but really just um, focused on taking better at bats every at bat. And when you're facing a guy like that, obviously you need your starter to to match him and, and keep you in the game. And you, Darvish, absolutely did that. And I thought. Maybe the the key moment of the game came there in the top of the fourth inning when uh, they started the inning with two singles off of you, and he came back, struck out Yastrzemski, and then had the uh, the liner back there. The the runners those second and third, so a chance to to really break the game open a little bit for the Giants and that strikeout of Conforto to end the inning. Uh, talk a little bit about you, Darvish's just just performance uh, yesterday and what you saw from him. Yeah, there was a lot of big moments in the game yesterday. You just said one that. Probably didn't get noticed as much, but was really big, you know, where he's in some traffic, he's, you know, you know, they got second and third, less than two outs, and he just makes really big pitches. And um, I thought he threw the ball fantastic, you know, from, from the very beginning. You know, Ahmed put a good swing on a tough pitch to give him that lead one nothing. And, you know, like you said, he was he was able to escape without any further damage. Thought he threw the ball very, very well. You know, not an easy decision about when to when to bring him out, but you know, it was in the sixth inning for the first time all year, seventy eight pitches, which you know later in the year that's not going to be an issue. But I want to make sure we're being smart as as we look at a long year, uh, and you know, one of his pitch count is really going to be about eighty five. So I uh, just felt like it was the time. But he threw the ball really, really well. Really pleased about every aspect of how he how he competed yesterday. Talking to the uh, skipper, Mike Schilt, here on Ben and Woods this morning. And, yeah, you know, I, I talked to Ruben Niebla the other day, and I asked him, how long does it take for you guys collectively to kind of come up with the plan? And one of the the aspects of the plan so far, an interesting one, I think, for Padres fans, and certainly ourselves, too, is is the usage of Johnny Brito. And he's got just electric stuff um, built up as a starter in spring training, now getting a couple of more high-leverage opportunities earlier in the season. What is the, the, the thinking behind that? Is it just, yeah, what is the thinking behind that, I guess, uh, from your guys' perspective? 
Well, I mean, you kind of explained it. Um, you know, it's a guy with experience in the bullpen, you know, successful experience over when, when he was with New York, um, comes over in the trade, is, a, you know, clearly can be a hybrid guy, was given the opportunity to start, you know, was really pushed out, um, you know, we got Dylan um, in the trade. And so we put him in a role that's a little more, he's got some experience doing, um, give him an opportunity. Like you said, big arm, loved his fastball, you know, just yesterday a couple of balls found some holes that, you know, created some opportunities for them to their credit. And, um, you know, he's, he's done the ball well. He's got a nice arm and those strikes and, you know, a lot of good things to like about a guy that can come out of your bullpen. It's our weekly SDCCU Managers Report with Mike Schilt here on Ben and Woods on 97.3 The Fan. And Mike, if you can recall after the game, what word did you use to describe Fernando Tatis Jr. going from <laughs> first to third there in the sixth inning on a little number in front of the plate? That was sexy. <laughs> it, was, it was, yeah, it, it was. Uh, um, I love that I you use that a- word because we, we all find certain baseball plays sexy as well. Oh, We're just yeah. those kind of fans. What other baseball plays do you think you might describe as, as sexy, Mike? I don't know. You kind of know it when you see it. <laughs> I mean, um, uh, you know, there'll be more that'll come up that we'll, uh, we'll attach that to. But, you know, that was just a baseball play that, you know, it's heads up. It's uh, it's, it's all, this, all the intangibles. You know, it's um, anticipation. It's. It's athleticism, it's it's um, aggression, it's trust. Um, it's all the different things that, that make a really special baseball play. And, you know, there was actually a fair amount of them yesterday. I mean, Toddy's was very well aptly described. Um, just a worst of great baseball plays going on the pitch, full count with Crony, and, you know, didn't didn't hesitate. And the thing that was even more impressive about it for me is that ball's behind him. Um, you know, it's over on the first base side, and he's going towards second. But, he was able to figure out what that looked like and make a decision. Um, you know, Jackson going first to third on the ball bogey hit was um, was really nice. Manny going first to third. It was just really good base running plays yesterday that, for me, are a big differenti- differentiators and help you win baseball games. Now, unfortunately, you didn't you didn't cash in on that sexy play because uh, Manny just got a little bit in on the wrist there and, and floated the one to second. After that at bat, he he tried to snap the bat over his knee. Now, yeah. I don't know that anyone can ever make fun of Manny Machado. No. He's such a, a stud. But did anyone say anything in the dugout after <laughs> after that moment? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's that's just, that is a perfect perfect answer. I think you saw something I didn't. I yeah. Know. I was like, wait, what happened? Yeah. What play? Yeah, that's exactly way, right. Mike Schilt doesn't miss anything. No, else. no, 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 no. That's exactly <laughs> right, man. Talking to the skipper, Mike Schilt here on Ben and Woods. Uh, listen, you know, we talked. When we were at spring training, uh, the three of us or the four of us talked about, you know, you trying to get the best out of what you have and what you've been given as the manager. You know, A.J. Preller's job is to to put the guys on the roster. I think a lot of people, I mean, you can't really say much about what Tyler Wade's done. He's, he's done really, really well, and he's he's a grindy player, and, you know, he's really making the most of his opportunity. I We talked, though, about... You know, the young kids, and, and I'm, I'm talking, of course, about Grand Pauly and, you know, him being on the roster, he's not going to get a ton of at-bats right now. He may need those to develop. How do you reconcile that as you move forward throughout the season? Yeah, I mean, you know, listen, we you know we clearly want to take advantage of every opportunity. Tyler Wade's done a great job. He has. He's a fantastic job. He, he's, um, you know, again, he's made baseball plays um, that, the, you know, our fan base, it's a you know, very educated, passionate fan base is aware of. It does it does a lot of little things really well. He's played, you know, very good defense um, on on most every play. Um, he's had great at bats. You know, he's got a hit in every game, at least one. He scored multiple runs um, early in the season. He's run the bases really well. Um, got a big hit to right yesterday in that four run inning that that got us going after Campy's base hit. Um, he just played really, really well. You know, Rosario's played really well when he gets the opportunities against um, lefties, and he'll get a chance today against Harrison uh, to go in there. So we feel really good about that. They're holding down third, um, while Manny's still working to get back as an everyday player on the uh, on the field. Um, you know, so Paulie, I mean, you know, look, he takes great at bats. He's clearly played third. Um, just doesn't have as much experience at that position. You know, at the higher levels. Um, is still working with him, works hard every day. 
clearly a guy we like. Um, so it's just a matter of, you know, what, what the opportunities present themselves. Sure, finding the, the right spot for him. Uh, but you're talking about ABs, and I, I couldn't have been more impressed with with Campisano's yesterday. I mean, the the shortening up with two strike, two two strike hits, I believe, yesterday. Just massive, massive growth from that young man, uh, and and look good behind the dish as well. Uh, tell us about the work that he's been putting in, and and how conscious that's been to try to shorten up and and you know just put the ball in play with two strikes. Yeah, Campy's demonstrated early, which is really impressive, at early stages of his career, about what a professional, not only a hitter looks like, but a player looks like. He just, um, he really loves the game, studies the game, is intentional about being great at the game. And, you know, him him taking what the game gives you, you know, he's got the ability, as we've seen, to drive the ball, you know, drive the ball in the gaps out of the ballpark. But he's also got the ability to recognize, you know what, I'm in a, I'm in a battle here. Um, and I'm going to compete in two strikes. I'm going to figure out a way to give myself the best chance to, to drive in the run, get on base, whatever it takes in the situation. So he's also done a really nice job. He's grown a ton behind the plate, and, and uh, I'm enjoying working with him um, as our catcher. He's doing a, he's doing a really good job on all all, fa- all facets of the game. I, I've got a question. Uh, you, so you aggressively used uh, Sugar to pinch yeah. run there in uh, with a one-run lead, still middle of the game. Uh, for Jurickson, is that pulling the levers? Is that something like you you consider part of your style? Is that something we'll see going forward, or was that specific to this game and that situation? Because I know a lot of managers probably wouldn't have gone that early to their bench for a pinch runner in that situation. Uh, well, you know, you know, it's going to be a close game, which it was. Um, you know, I don't know. I just call what the situ you know the situation dictates. I mean, Pro Pro's a, obviously a good player and has a lot of skill sets. So it's not. As I said earlier, it's more about what sugar can can bring in certain areas, um, because you know we trust Pro Far in every situation. Late in the game, doesn't matter, and every game's different, um, you know. But sugar is a plus runner, um, and just the situation you're looking at, we know we're in the bottom of the fifth. So we've we've um, and that spot clearly had just come up, so you don't know how many times you're going to turn the turn the lineup back over. Um, but I know this: we got a chance you know, with less than two outs um, for the guy there to, you know, they're going to bring the infield in. We know we got a chance to go in contact with second and third or a fly ball. We're going to give ourselves a chance to, you know, continue to add on. Um, and so the situation dictated it, um, depending on if we've used anybody else during the game or what what it looks like later in the game or how we feel about, you know, the game, how it's going to, how it's going to go. Um, you know, different decisions can be made. So, you know, we again, you you got – if you think you're going to get the lead, which we did, and you're in the fifth, you got six, seventh, and eight. That spot may be coming up one more time. Um, you know, you you make the you make the call. Kind of a, a trade for, for plus running and defense maybe in, in that spot. I, I Look, we we, right. uh, we lauded it uh, because we'd kind of been – you know, we've been saying for years, make strong moves. I mean, make strong moves. Use the guys on the bench uh, when you need to. So, I, great. It was a really, really impressive uh, win by the fellas, by yourself, you know, battling back a couple of different times. I mean, you got to remember everyone in, in San Diego is still a little punch drunk from last year, <laughs> not used to seeing that fight from the guys. The the There are no more slumping shots shoulders when you get down a run it's a it certainly has a different look and obviously uh, wish you guys continued success and you know keep doing what you're doing and w- do you think we were asking yesterday on, on our broadcast mike we've now seen i think we've seen the same three lineups now you, you mentioned today eggy's going to be in there instead of uh, tyler wade at third base was that a superstition thing or was that a matchup thing or how superstitious are you as a skipper uh no it's not superstition it's it's you know what gives the best chance to compete you know going into the game and during the game so um you know we, we faced three righties and you know felt like that was our best lineup to compete and, and to win so that's what we ride with nothing wrong with little superstition and speaking of that uh what did bob melvin say to you when you shook hands with oh, him yeah. before the game i'm just kind of curious if you can share any part of your dialogue uh we just said hello it's good to catch up and um you know you that was about it, really. It was just basic formality. Just the just the formality. I lo- I loved and and I we gotta let you. I loved when you guys lined up and your players just seemed so excited. The the hugs and I mean really into it. I loved the the fives. You were given you know hard high fives to everyone as you went down the line uh, when you were introduced as manager. And I I loved that moment. The whole as you said the whole pregame ceremony though with Shield 
and throwing out the first pitch and, and the moment of silence was really fun. Really special day, Mike. Uh, looking forward to these conversations throughout the season. Appreciate it. Congratulations on getting that win, and let's uh, get another one tonight. Sounds great, guys. Appreciate you. Thank you. There he is, uh, Mike Schilt, our manager's report, brought to you by San Diego County Credit Union. Uh, looking forward to these uh, weekly chats this is amazing. with Mike Schilt. Eh, it's just a formality. It's just something that you do. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. I mean, Bob got booed when he was introduced. Yeah. I wasn't sure, but yeah. it was it was definitely not a smattering. It was it was booze. It was booze. Yeah. There, there were booze for Bob Melvin, and then Blake didn't get introduced. They didn't introduce the Giants reserves yeah. like they did the Padres. So. He never had an opportunity to get kind of recognized by the fans. Well, the players. The shades he got, uh, Mud and Don. Yeah, he got Mud and Don some shades. And Manny, Manny went up behind him and bear hugged him. I mean, obviously, they still, there's still a lot of love for Blake Snell in this town, as there should be. Yeah. And I, I thought he should have been cheered if he had been introduced, yeah. but he never got that chance. All right. Did you have any reaction to that? Uh, join us, chat at Ben and Woods on, uh, on X, on Twitter, if you want to join us. Thank you again to uh, our friends at SDCCU yep. for the management report. The manager's report brought to you by San Diego County Credit Union. And it's not big bank banking, it's better. Outstanding. All right. Uh, if you want to join us, 833 288 Last couple of segments of the week. Get you to 10 o'clock. Annie and Elston coming up. It's Ben and Woods. Check traffic right now on 97.3 The Fan. Up to a pound. Please call. She does feel good. Yeah, she does feel good. So SDFatLoss.com. Check them out online today.
savvy. Oh, extremely I like that word, savvy. But yes. it's a good one to describe Mike Schilt, yeah. manager of the San Diego Padres. Take, uh, for instance, my question about Manny Machado and the failed bat snap over his knee. He both didn't answer the question, yet also answered the question playfully and entertainingly, moving the conversation on in a positive direction. It's a skill. It's a skill that not everybody possesses, especially even people in in high positions in baseball who have to deal with the media a lot. But it is undoubtedly a skill and one that Mike Schilt uh, seems to possess in abundance from our conversations with him so far. Yeah, and, you know, I, I definitely got the sense uh, from him. You know, the, the burrito uh, stuff. I, I kind of see his point uh, of, look, he got – I didn't think about this. He did. He got bumped out of the rotation when they signed Dylan Cease, essentially. And because he has such a live arm – I mean, he hasn't been – he hasn't been super effective yet, but I think I don't think the organization is looking at it as like he's terrible. I think they look at it as no, he's still got stuff that plays, just gotten a little bit unlucky so far, um, but that they still really like what he can bring to the table. And and you know, like Ruben told me the other day, man, it takes a couple of weeks to figure it out. Now, if it's a, the seventh inning tonight. And Padres are up, down a run, and Johnny Brito comes in and gives up three straight hits again. Yeah, I mean, I think, but you're going. He's going to let them fail a little bit for a while. I, and again, you can't say enough good things about what Yuki Matsui was able to do yesterday, and Tom Cosgrove, just electric, electric stuff yesterday from those guys. Huge, huge outs late in the game. Johnny Brito is uh, is an interesting. Interesting subject here because depending on who you talk to, like Eno, very, very high on Brito, but I've also heard people who are not high on Brito at all and wondered why the Padres even wanted him in, in the Juan Soto trade. So, well, I think if you watch his stuff, you realize that, again, he's got good stuff, and it's just it, finding a role for guys can be very difficult, and a lot of times it takes years before you can find a role um, for, for certain players. So <clears throat> hopefully that's not the case, and – and he gets settled in and gets some big outs. And, and, you know, a lot of people yesterday were saying, well, what about Eniel De Los Santos? Yeah, I mean, these are what this is what the first couple of weeks of the season is for. They're going to have to try to figure out where to slot those guys. I don't wish that job on anybody, As, to be as you mentioned, I mean, and you also have a game to play tomorrow. So just because they didn't use a Juan de Peralta or yeah. Eniel De Los Santos or Stephen Kolek doesn't mean that those, all right, we saw the top relievers today. Right. And then anyone who didn't play, obviously, is a lesser reliever. No, you have to save some of your better relievers. You can't just have, all right, one. One game we're using our four best relievers, and then the next game we're using our the three worst twos. relievers. Yeah, it's exactly. not how baseball works. You you mix them together so you have some good guys available every single day in case you end up in a high leverage situation with a one or two you know two run lead in the seventh I mean, or eighth I, inning. I, I literally I was literally getting DMs. People were incensed yesterday that Mike Schilt would go to Johnny Brito. The only way I think to get trust is by by getting opportunities to be trustworthy, right? Like the only way to earn trust. And right now, so far, 0 for 2, right? I guess with Johnny Brito. But if if Robert Suarez, two years ago, when he came in that first game and blew the ninth inning to pieces, all of a sudden, well, we can never use him again. Well, you'd be much worse off. Correct. You, you, have to, you have to keep getting on the horse with guys for a while, and then you make your judgment on them. But if you're snap judging after one appearance and going, we got to totally use him in a different situation than we were planning – I don't think you're doing it the right way as a manager. And again, what is the right way as a manager? I certainly don't know. And it, it, the guy's getting dragged for bullpen management after one game, one home game. I get it. Um, it's going to be a long year, you know, if, if you do that. Of course, the the hindsight move is always twenty twenty. But I'm I I, I don't mind uh, getting those DMs. But you know, listen, I, I do subscribe to the fact that. You know, they know more about the matchups than I certainly do. They know more uh, than I do, but. You know, again, if he runs him out there eight times in a row and he falters, well, that's eight games. Maybe you could have could have won. So the the beef yeah. in the uh, chat says if if Usuk Go can be back up and pitching, you know how he should in the next three to six weeks, we'll have a great pen. I, I don't even know that he's the first up. Remember, in the minors now, they have Jeremiah Estrada, they have Alec Jacob, they have Randy Vasquez, they have Usuk Go. That there is a depth to the Padres bullpen right now that is. 
enviable for a lot of teams. Well, there is, and I think if you look at the guys yesterday, I mean, I know Suarez gave up the the bomb in the ninth. Didn't didn't hurt you. Um, you, you know, you don't want to see that from your closer ever. Uh, but if you're Schilt and Niebla and, and Preller, for that matter, you look at what the guys checked off yesterday, and you you put Yuki Matsui in high leverage, and what did he do? He delivered, and then some. You put Tom Cosgrove in high leverage, and he delivered, and then some. So, good. That's uh, two check marks for those guys. Brito, you give him about a C, you know, but they're going to get their chances. It takes a collective to, to eat those innings. They're going to do it the best way they know how. It's not a, like... Mike Schilt putting Johnny Brito in a game, it, it's nothing personal. Sometimes you have to just bite your nails and grit your way through it if you're the skipper. Like, this is what the matchups say. I kind of want to go with this. I like what I've seen. Let me get him back on the horse. And again, I'm, I'm going to do the same thing that you did. This is not an insult to Reese Kinnear, but putting Johnny Brito in is not like correct. He's not like punting on the it's, game. That's how I he's feel. He's a too. really good arm. Poor and, Reese you know, is just, just our whipping boy. He's just trying. Poor guy. We well, think of another I, name. I, I know. We need to come up with come another, a fake name. Come up with another guy you just throw in because you don't yeah. have anyone else. And, and unfortunately, he's been our example a little bit, which is totally unfair. But Potteries don't have any of those guys in their bullpen right now they don't I mean Avila is probably the closest if the game got out of hand one way or another you'd probably see Avila right now for two or three innings just to save everybody else but otherwise every single guy in the bullpen I'm sure is someone that they're excited about using you know in in games it's not one of those hold your breath situations what are we going to get I think they're confident in everybody down there for sure at this moment so it's a good spot to be in for for Mike Schilt all right if you're on hold you want to stay there uh, we can get some phone calls last segment Annie and Elston I saw Craig already in there uh, chomping at the bit to talk about the game champing at the bit it's spelled champing you taught me that it's definitely spelled champing you taught me that it's champing at the bit I don't know whether it's pronounced one way or the other well chomp is c-h-o-m-p right you said C H A. Champing is how it's spelled. Champing, Champing at, at the, the bit. bit. Uh, to join uh, and get their four hours in coming up next. So we'll wrap things up when we return with Ben and Woods on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
That was a fun break. Was it fun for you? It was not fun for, for me. Don't hate the player, hate the game. I guess. We don't know what you're talking about. You do. I do. You started it. I did. I Hannah had mentioned in the chat uh, a discussion of Robbie Erlin, and I had remembered that you had said before that <laughs> that Hannah once went on a date with the former Padres pitcher Robbie Erlin. Indeed. So I simply. Simply inquired as to ask the her. End. Tell everybody what you asked her. <laughs> ask by the it way. the way. Ask you it asked the way you asked it, it off the air. I said, "Did you go all the way with Robbie?" Did you Irwin? go all the way? No. The answer no. was no. No. But then, what did you say? I said, "Oh no." And Carnal I said, relations. I said, did you make out with him? She goes, "Yeah." I go, "You did." I had no idea. I've been married for how long? Six years. I think. Yeah. Been together ten. That was a little break in our relationship. And yeah, I, so that was only like seven years ago. But you crapped so bad on the date that I assumed you did not make out with him. You gotta, you gotta try it out to see if you want to go on a second date. Well, you went out with me. We didn't make out on our first date. I'm I the wasn't love planning of, on going on a second date with you. We have two children at home. <laughs> you were old. I had no. I'm still old. <laughs> oh my God. But if you definitely, he's are, bold. What if, if you're definitely planning on going on a second date, you can also wait as well. Right, knowing that you can, oh, yeah, you can, yeah, you can, yeah, she if, can, if she did with me. Hardcore, either way, you don't have to make out with them, but if you are on the fence, then you do. So you, it was on the fence. That's what was it? Yeah. Because he was bald, probably. No, I, didn't, I would guess. I didn't, no offense. My to, dad was bald, so it's fair. It's probably a, a check mark in his favor. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> was, good. Was it was because he was short, and you guys were the same height. I think I have oh a God. big personality, and I think I, you think so? I don't want to overpower someone. Hmm. So I would disagree. <laughs> I disagree. So I, I would have no chance with Hannah if you two ever broke up. Z- She'd overpower first of all, me. I'm not the girl next door, so it's well, not a fit anyway. First of all, you'd have no chance with her because your buddy that you worked with was married to her and has children with her. So that's strike one. So the answer was... Ben's like, is it? Th- th- right. Who was the... Uh, what was there? Wasn't there two pitchers who yeah. just traded wives uh, and was, families? Uh, oh, entire two families? Yankees yeah. pitchers. Just, it, it didn't end it well. Like a... Oh, it didn't it end didn't well. End well really? no. It didn't end they well. They both Shocking. got divorced. Shocking. But one of the couple <laughs> stayed together. No, they didn't. I yes. think they both split. It was Fritz, Peterson, and somebody else, and they swapped. The they they swapped it. wives. Yeah. And it wasn't like, hey, let's for one night. It was like, no, no, I'm moving in. Mike Kekich, Mike Kekich. And Fritz, Fritz, Fritz Peterson, in mm-hmm. 1972. Um, they swapped wives. It was made public ahead of the 1973s, and both players lived in New Jersey with their families. Were very good friends. Very odd story in the 1970s, but the 70s were just it was a, an odd time. Just a decade, apparently. I wasn't really, I don't remember much of the 70s. I was very young. Hmm. Polly wasn't even around yet. Hannah wasn't even around yet. No. Uh, so I don't, I don't really know what was going on. You back don't then. go after your friend's <laughs> wife, though. So, no, the answer is you wouldn't have a chance because you don't want a chance because she was married to your buddy and your co host, right? Right. <laughs> I did take a picture of the two of you guys the other night that was incredible. It, way better than any picture Hannah and I have ever <laughs> taken together. I'm going to text it to Paul. You look like a power couple. You Sandy really do. Power couple. Ben looked like Steve Garvey in this picture. I went, <laughs> probably a better looking uh, couple than me and Hannah are. It was unbelievable. The, the SD Fat Loss is own, uh, Ben and Hannah. Well, thank you, SD Fat Loss. You guys loss. are a little power couple, I guess. <laughs> Yo, so, uh, yes, uh, Fritz and Suzanne with... are still married. <laughs> I can't get Oh, they are. Kekich and Marilyn fizzled out and they split, at least as of the writing of this you, story in 2022. You're right. You're right again. Yeah. Right again. Did you go all the way? No. Now I'm starting to doubt it because you never said that you made out with Robbie Erlin, ever. How was it? It escaped my mind. Outside of the sports bar that he took her to no, for Chiefs. the first date. That <laughs> Chiefs. That was my bit for a while to go I've to I've been Chiefs. to Chiefs. Yeah. 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 Not a bad spot. It's Salon not of Beach bad. there. It's not yeah. great. Yeah. This has been a fun show. Really enjoyed having you in. Any, any, anybody else in town uh, that you made out with that I may need to know <laughs> about, probably? Anybody else famous? No. Okay. Sure. No. Good. This hour on 97.3 <laughs> The Fan is brought to you by Ashley Furniture. 
Ashley's got to love this segment. Celebrate and save it. Ashley's anniversary <laughs> sale with Hot Buys. Your choice of color. Hot Buys. <laughs> starting like Robbie Erlin. $399. Ashley Sleep Sorry. Mattresses. Do what you want on them. Starting at $250. <laughs> Plus, receive a free adjustable base with select mattress purchases only at Ashley. Let's oh check traffic before I get God. in any more trouble here on 97.3 The Fan. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Danik. Got a couple of problems wrapping up our morning drive. Westbound 8 before El Cajon Boulevard, a crash blocking the right lane. Southbound side of the 805 past the University, reports of a possible encampment fire. Some smoke visible from that right shoulder. I'm Kelly Danik with Ben and Woods, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3, the fan. I honestly don't know what to do now. You want to go to the phones? We got give me one second. Give me anything. one second. Paulie's got I want to go home is what I want to do <laughs> by myself. <laughs> Pulling up the uh, picture of the two. Ah, yes. You two love right. birds. Look at this picture wow, of them. Look at it's them. stunning. Look at that. Sorry for the, uh, those of you listening on the radio. <laughs> they really look great. Ben looks like a like a young Steve Garvey in his sport coat. I and... almost look like I'm photoshopped into this picture <laughs> somehow. I really was there. I didn't make the beginning of dinner, any of the eating or meal portions, but I was there at the end to take the picture with Hannah. Yeah, Johnny says, I'm going to cry in the shower later. Yeah, with the Budweiser tall boy just crying in the shower later. Ben, Mr. Steal Your Girl. Steal Your Girl. Real good. San Diego's premier couple. This sucks, dude. I hate, I hate this game. <laughs> I'm having a miserable Friday. I wasn't going to be fussy crap. today, and now I'm fussy. Now, as I look closer, <laughs> as I look closer at that picture, Paul, Paul call it up once more. Oh, uh, there's a, so there's a mirror behind us. Even the back of Hannah's hair looked good in that picture. Yeah. Let's see, look at that. The back of my hair looks solid. We've got. We've got multiple angles. Now, who else can we see? Is that Polly right there Nobody, in the, in the mirror think. way in the back of the picture? I think that might... That's Woods in that, the corner. That's right Woods, yeah. Shoulder. Woods. Yeah. This is the Zapruder picture now. Somebody <laughs> said that's a framer. It absolutely... <laughs> I, I do want that frame to put in my house. I would I would absolutely, absolutely <laughs> have that which picture. Would, which would be epic for people to walk in and comment on if you ever had anyone over to your house, which, of course, you don't. That will never... I will tweet the picture. Ben <laughs> <laughs> I will tweet the picture for those of you that uh, oh, missed so it funny. on the radio. Holy cow, man. Man. That is good. I gotta get my ass in gear, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Any uh, big weekend plans for the the Ben and Woods crew here? Um, Golf? Try to stay dry. I don't think not this weekend. Apparently, it doesn't look good for Saturday and or Sunday for baseball viewing golfing or any other outdoor activities like Easter egg hunts on Sunday morning. Prepare to get wet. Do the whoa. God, what's Sa- happening today? Save that. Um, I are we going to do an Easter egg hunt for the boys? You wife, are, are we, we doing? Are we supposed it? to? Yeah, we have two small oh, well, children. We're going to the Omni, and they have an Easter egg hunt. Okay, they're going to do one there, but it's going to be raining, so we're going to do that. I'm a big Easter person. Yeah, I know. Um, that's about it. Yeah, we're supposed to have a t-ball game tomorrow. That's going to be. You love out. deviled eggs. You have to at least have oh, some deviled, deviled eggs, eggs. Ooh, right this week. Good. Is that an Easter thing? Well, I mean, you have eggs. a bunch of eggs that you just found that are hard boiled oh, yeah. already. So then you just turn true. them into deviled eggs. Well, Is, it's not, not as what easy. Does? It's not as easy as you don't wave a wand. They're kind of a pain in the ass to make, it's and true. by a kind of, they're a massive yeah. pain in the ass to make. So I know I'm not making them, and I doubt very much Mrs. Woods is going to make them either. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, but no, that's what we're going to do. And yeah, try to stay dry. It doesn't I mean it looks so beautiful out? We'll probably get tonight's game in. Tomorrow, tomorrow's game is a little bit suspect, and Sunday doesn't look good at all. So if you do have tickets for those games, I'm really sorry. That's kind of a bummer. I'm yeah. tweeting this picture. Have right we now. changed midweek games to be late now? They used to be afternoon games, and I've kind of noticed on the schedule that they're evening games. Are they not the doing the part? Thursday business person special as they used to do anymore? I, on did, the, not, uh, I did not notice You know, that. It, it oftentimes... It has to do more with the team that's coming into town. If they have to get on a flight like back to the East Coast, they make those games early. Not not really as a special promotion to get people out of work, but it's more of a travel issue for the other team. Yeah. Like oh, they gotta sense. fly out after the game and get back to they a, still got midweek after the East do. Coast. So yeah. but 
Wednesday when, the 10th, for example, is 340 instead of 110 or 12. Yeah. Or but o- like oftentimes, that. like if you're if you're playing like a team like the Dodgers who just has to drive up the road, they'll make those night games because they do realize that more okay. people still can make games in the evening mm-hmm. than during the afternoon. I see what you're talking about. So the Cubs series, the, uh, April 8th, 9th, and 10th, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that Tuesday game is a 705 first pitch here in San Diego. Yeah. Just 25 minutes later than normal. That must be a national TV yeah, game. Yeah, must be national TV. But um, that sounds awful. But then the that following extra 25 week, minutes. <laughs> the following week after that, 540. Just, I just noticed it. Yeah. Um, when I'm requesting the Odyssey suite from Adam, yeah, I just right. want to have luck game times. It. Good luck getting yeah, there's, there's it. Yeah, there's definitely more for KSON. Oh, you do? Then you can get it. Definitely more variety maybe in the game times this year than, mm-hmm. than you've seen. But some have to do with national television. Some have to do with travel schedules for the opposition or if the Padres have to get out of town on a road trip after the game they they tend to make those a little bit earlier then you got the weird Sunday ones because there's like the rock and roll marathon game and then there's an ESPN game on Sunday coming up uh in just a, another week I believe the April 14th game at the Dodgers is an er, is a four o'clock game on a Sunday ESPN Sunday night baseball so yeah check your local listings to make sure you know when all Padres games are taking place tonight is 6 40 which is Kind of the traditional start time yep. for That's Padres evening games during the week. Uh, so we'll have our Eco Water SoCal pregame show with Sammy Levitt at 5.40 p.m. But they did you know, mostly do away with those after 7 o'clock starts, which uh, I can't even remember how we got through those. They, I don't, they I don't, seem so late now. Like that 7.05 start in a, in a week or two is like, I'm like, that's only 25 <laughs> minutes. And that's not even... That's even earlier than when games used to start, 7 10. I'm like, what were we doing? How did we do it? Uh, Pedro in the chat says, Guys, can I please get a quick shout out for my son who turns 15 today? We listen every day, tier one Ben fans. So shout out, uh, Thank pa- you. Pedro, to your son. You did not give us a name, but. And your whole family, but not in that way. Right. Yeah. Shout, yeah. Out, <laughs> shout out to your. Did you do the thing what, yesterday? What's your problem? So what happened? happened? I took the picture, but that. Jared it's not and a Melissa. Picture. We were, wanted the video. I know, but they were in the booth the entire time I was up there. there it wasn't like they, no one ever let me have the booth to shoot a video. They were in the middle of live television, and it's actually quite small. There's not even room for more than two people. It's so initiative. I, I just couldn't Aren't push them the out of the way anchor? off of Aren't a, you the sports director? Yeah, but they're the news anchors. Oh. They outrank me. Do they out? Is that oh, how it works? Absolutely. Okay. The new, main they news anchor. anchors. Yes. They That's why your show. dad went from weather anchor to news anchor. Oh, I was so they, perturbed when he had they, to go back to weather. They, out, <laughs> they outrank us Sorry. weather and sports people. That's just how you, it works. Really, yeah. I like the power the, rankings of the station. The bottom rung. Although I felt pretty highly ranked yesterday down at the Marriott when people were just constantly coming by, screaming at me, taking pictures. And Wale, our main anchor, is just sitting there going, like, laughing, like, he never had to get up once. It hurts. <laughs> it, he's laughing, but it hurts him inside. It does hurt him inside. But I, sure. I, I told him, it's it a Padres was... game. This is this is a once of the year kind of Alex, kind of deal. Alex says, uh, Ben fans, there's a ton of those groupies. They're called the Benefits. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Which I like, I like very much. Well, I imagine the Benefits are a big fan of things Ben likes. Oh, big time. And we have a brand new edition that debuted just yesterday. Let's hear it again. I like a lot of things. I like Chick-fil-A sauce. I just like rankings. I like Steve Winwood. I like pie gal poker. I like to be informed on subjects. I like Chicago. I like Tom Petty. I like the idea of another left-handed bat in the lineup for sure. I do like a good Matt Damon film. I like being on the same page. I like broccoli. I like Brussels sprouts. I like a lot of things. I like this shirt. I like Wipeout. I like my omelet. I like San Diego State at home. I like when a baseball player can be more than just a baseball player. I like vanilla. I like the atmosphere. I like the felt on a poker table. Just kind of how it feels under your fingers when you're there. I like rhubarb pie. I like the window seat. Changing the subject. I like that. I like just the standard yellow peep. I like how San Diego State's <laughs> playing right now. I like finer things. I like calling a game. I like fiction more than nonfiction. Right. Just like the cream. I actually like playing golf with other people. I've liked everything I've seen so far from Mike Schill. I like Mexican food. I like just the soul system. I do <laughs> like steak. I like specifics. I like going to Seven Mile Casino during the day. I like that people are there having a good time. I like my new eating schedule. I liked what I was eating. Yeah, I like the variety of the menu at Sammy's. I do like a good midnight buffet. Oh, that is fantastic stuff. So good.
How long is the uh, the full one? Like if you play all the full of them one together, yet. we haven't we had have the full mashup. Yeah. Is it fifteen minutes? minutes? <laughs> it's getting long. Each one's sure. about a minute, fifteen minutes. Yeah, so, so really, only like four minutes worth of four things, to five minutes. Things I like at this point. We can't. Woods' dream is just to have an entire four hour show. See you later. And we don't even <laughs> show up that day. It's we'll just there. things we'll Ben likes Wednesday well, or something. So it's it's funny <laughs> that you bring that up because uh, the time you were out of town and me and Paulie. Um, played the Bob Dylan song in its entirety. 14 minutes of the Bob Dylan song. 17. Seven, excuse me. 17 minutes. We played the whole thing. I was listening on my drive up to Disneyland. And it was excruciating to play, and it was excruciating probably to hear, but I want I want seventeen minutes of likes. I want to have the same length of the Bob Dylan opus uh, in in like form, and I think we can get there probably by the end of the year if I had to imagine. Uh, but that's what I want. Happy to oblige. That's what that's what my dream is is to <laughs> get like seventeen to minutes of uh, Bob Dylan. You know, like Rub a Dub Dub, whatever that song was called. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we get another big week next week. They just uh, keep coming. After us uh, with uh, big events, yes. and on Tuesday, of course, we'll be out uh, for the 97.3 The Fan Poncho Night at Petco Park, throwing out the ceremonial first pitch, my first time ever doing it. But, really? Yeah, never, That's other right. than that Lake Elsinore one, which I don't really count, because it wasn't the official first pitch, it was simply the pre First pitch, first pitches with now, like are 17 we doing, other people. Are we yeah, doing the Are we doing the ceremonial? I don't yeah, know. I think we're I, doing the actual ce- There's no other honorary. first pitches at Pet- Petco Park. This is the yeah. ceremonial first pitch. Oh, boy. So maybe bring your glove on Monday so we can well, do a little practice. I have a question. We don't we don't bring our gloves to the mound, right? You don't do that. No. No. Okay. That's no, no. Oh you, my no, you gosh. just walk out and you have the baseball Actually, ready. No, you yes. totally should bring your gloves. <laughs> hey, Ben. Everybody yeah, bring your, everyone's bringing their gloves. gloves. Too. What's... What kind of idiot wouldn't bring their gloves? Also, where do we throw from? Right in front. In front of the mound. I'm not messing up whoever's pitching that day. I'm not messing up their mound with my I believe it's my Darvish's feet. schedule. Oh, I'm definitely not messing Aww. messing Aww. up Hugh's yeah. mound by stepping on it. No chance. So we'll be back Monday, 6 a.m. We'll have uh, hopefully three games, but probably one game to talk about. For Paul Reindel, for Stephen Woods, I'm Ben Higgins. What about and, Hannah and Carol Woods? And Hannah Woods. and Carol Woods. <laughs> hey, try not to make out with anybody Annie before we leave. <laughs> Coming up next here on The Fan. <laughs>